Dear colleagues, I'm very glad to see you again. Let's get our work today. As usual, let me present the discussion of the fourth meeting of the Bureau. Dear colleagues, I'm very happy to welcome you today for our plenary meeting. The Bureau of the Committee held its fourth meeting today. During this meeting, the Bureau viewed the progress of the work of the committee. And I record that we had examined a number of state of conservation reports of properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger, including the momentous decision to remove the Salonga National Park in DRC from the list in danger. However, concerning Liverpool, as you all know, subsequent to a request formulated by committee members, we had to resort to a vote which took place earlier on this morning at UNESCO headquarters in Paris, and for which I will announce the results in a few minutes. I also informed the Bureau that once all reports of properties in danger, item 7A, have been examined, we will start item 7B in the exact order in which they are foreseen in the calendar circulated by the Secretariat. This means we will start with 7B31, Muslim of Koja Ahmed Yasawi, 7B33, Kathmandu, then proceed with 7B1, Abame, 7B118, Lalibela, before examining 7B49, Budapest. I also informed the Bureau that we have 16 state of conservation reports to examine under item 7B over the next three days and numerous amendments to consider. This is very heavy workload. I would therefore like to take this opportunity to recall that at its 43rd session in 2019, the committee had supported the current procedure for committee members to request the opening of state of conservation reports by providing a written request to the chairperson sufficiently in advance of the session and indicating the reason why the reports should be opened. Last minute requests to open a report for discussion don't allow enough time to be prepared for a well-informed decision-making process. I therefore invite you to avoid opening any new reports at this stage of the session. If there's no objection, we will proceed this way. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Lastly, I reminded the Bureau that the established working group on the budget chaired by Ms. Zoya Kriskaya will hold its first meeting today from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Paris time using the name Zoom link for the Bureau and the plenary meetings. Dear colleagues, as you all know, voting by secret ballot, ballot has taken place earlier on today regarding the state of conservation of Liverpool. The results are as follows. Number of committee members present and voting, 20. Number of committee members absent, one. Number of blank ballot papers, zero. Number of 
invalid ballot papers. Two, number of valid ballot papers, 18. Votes in favor of the proposal, 13. Votes not in favor of the proposal, five. Majority required, two thirds, 12. Therefore, the decision, the draft decision, 44.78.34 is adopted. Dear colleagues, I would like to know if you have any comments after I announce the result, results of the vote. No comment. <laughs> Since the vote is positive, the draft decision 44.78.34 proposed is adopted. It means that the site of Liverpool maritime mercantile city is deleted from the World Heritage List. We now move on with the next agenda item. I would like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about this property. I see now. Let's proceed then. I now invite Ms. Rosler to read the list of the other natural properties located in the Africa region for which the reports are proposed for adoption without discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. So I will read out the list of the other properties from the Africa regions for uh, where the reports are proposed for adoption without discussion. So this is number 39, Manovo Gunda, St. Flores National Park in the Central African Republic. Number 40, Mount Nimba Strict Nature Reserve, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea. Number 41, Garamba National Park in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 42, Kausi Biega National Park, Democratic Republic of the Congo. 43, Okapi Wildlife Reserve, Democratic Republic of the Congo. 45, Virunga National Park, Democratic Republic of the Congo. Then we have number 46, which is the general decision on the World Heritage Properties of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 47, Lake Turkana National Parks in Senegal. 48, Rainforest of, uh, of the Atsinana, Madagascar. 49, Aie Tenere Natural Reserves in Niger. And number 50, Neokolokoba National Park in Senegal. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. If there's no objection from the committee on these state of conservation reports, I declare the decisions read out adopted. I'd now like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about one of the properties 
for which we have adopted the decision without a discussion. Libya, please, you have the floor for two minutes intervention. The microphone is muted now. Mm -hmm. We cannot hear you. Excellency. Mm. No, is it okay? Dr. Rosler, you, yeah. Thank you very much. We understand that the ambassador of Libya wishes to intervene, but we cannot hear him. The microphone doesn't seem to work. Please, ambassador. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. Hello? Yes, please. You have two minutes intervention. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. I think it would be best if somebody can write in a chat that we can hear the ambassador. Mr. Ambassador, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me now? Yes. Anyway, yes. thank you very much. Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the floor as a state party of, to the convention and observer to the committee. I would like to thank China for the wonderful organization of this session, as well as the World Heritage Center and UNESCO Secretariat for their effort. This statement concerning the World Heritage Site of the Old City of Damascus, of Libya. I'm sorry I missed to, I'm sorry to have missed the chance to speak in the right moment due to internet problem. But anyway, we appreciate the kind words and the continuous support for the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies and their acknowledgement of the effort of the State Party of Libya managing its World Heritage Site of the Damascus. We would also like to thank the Netherlands Fund in Trust, NFIT, for its support in the project, strengthening national capacities for the elaboration of corrective measures for Libya World Heritage property. Libya continues its close working relationship with the World Heritage Center and ICOMS. Libya took and will be taking more significant steps was the conservation of the property of the ancient site of Gadamus. It is known that the property of Gadamus has been included in the endangered list due to the effect of the armed conflict that took place in 2011 and beyond. But in fact, the armed conflict did not have a direct impact on the property. Gadamus suffered from limited indirect effects of the conflict, such as the lack of accessing to financing to carry out repairs and maintenance work. Unfortunately, a number of houses collapsed in December 2017 and others in March 2019. But this was as a result of heavy rains due to climate change and not through neglect. Libya will adopt the submitted corrective measures and adhere to its main frame or time frame for the implementation. Finally, we would like to repeat the invitation to the reactive monitoring mission to visit Gadamis and other Libyan World Heritage sites. Libya has high hopes that the next World Heritage Committee meeting will feel able to take Gadamis out of the endangered list and thereby support the local Gadams community 
to gain confidence in their ability to maintain their city to the highest standards. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your comment. Any more comment? I, I see now. Let's proceed then. I now invite Dr. Rosler to read the list of the properties of the Asia Pacific region for which the reports are proposed for adoption without discussion. Dr. Rosler, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. So this is um, point 52, tropical rainforests, uh, heritage of Sumatra in Indonesia and 53 East Renel in the Solomon Islands. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If there's no objection from the committee on this state of conservation report, I declare the decisions read out adopted. If now, I would uh, like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about the property for which we have adopted the decision without discussion. I see now. Now let's proceed then. I now invite Dr. Rosler to read the list of the properties of the Europe and North America region for which the reports are proposed for adoption without a discussion. Dr. Rosler, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We have item 54, which is Everglades National Park in the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If there is no objection from the committee on this state of conservation report, I declare the decision read out adopted. I would like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about the property for which we have adopted the decision without a discussion. I see now. Let's proceed then. I now invite Dr. Rosler to read the list of the properties of the Latin America and the Caribbean region for which the reports are proposed for adoption without a discussion. Dr. Rosler, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have item 55, which is Rio Platano Biosphere Reserve in Honduras, and 56, which is islands and protected areas of the Gulf of California in Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If there's no objection from the committee on this state of conservation report, I declare the decision read out adopted. I would now like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about the property for which we have adopted the decision without a discussion. Center for Biological Diversity, you have the floor for two minutes intervention. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm a proud citizen of Mexico and I do this intervention on behalf of the Center for Biological Diversity, the Animal Welfare Institute, the Natural Resources Defense Council, and the Environmental Investigation Agency. We thank the World Heritage Center and IUCN for conducting two missions to Mexico to evaluate the status of the World Heritage Site, Islands and Protected Areas of the Gulf of California, and for inscribing the site as endangered by the committee in 2019 and for allocating emergency funding for supporting removal of illegal fishing nets through the rapid response facility. With only 10 vaquita remaining on the planet and despite over two years since the endangered designation, 
the draft decision asked Mexico to submit its final proposal for corrective measures by February 1st, 2022, nearly eight months from now. This time frame is inexcusable and must be rejected, particularly since, as stated in the draft decision, illegal fishing of Totuaba has continued in the upper Gulf of California, resulting in a threat of imminent extinction of the vaquita population. The volume of illegally extracted Totuaba products remains high and concerns that the state party has not fully implemented the regulation adopted in September 2020 and has failed to enforcement. That is why the corrective measures must be completed by September 1st, 2021 and fully implemented by no later than October 1st, 2021 before the next illegal Totoaba fishing season begins. Anything short of this will further jeopardize the very existence of the vaquita, which if lost to extinction will profoundly undermine the value and integrity of the site and tarnish the, the reputation of the World Heritage Convention. With ten vaquita left, this could be the last opportunity for the community to act before the species, the species goes extinct. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mex Mexico, please, you have the floor for two minutes intervention. Gracias, señor presidente y miembros del comité. México cumple los compromisos y obligaciones contraídos ante la Convención del Patrimonio Mundial y realiza acciones encaminadas a la atención de las decisiones del comité para garantizar la protección del valor universal excepcional del bien, islas y áreas protegidas del Golfo de California. Queremos reconocer y destacar la cooperación entre el Gobierno de México, el Centro de Patrimonio Mundial y la UICN para atender el tema en vista de la adopción e implementación de las medidas necesarias para la supervivencia de la vaquita en el Alto Golfo de California. Con el fin de consolidar el compromiso de proteger a la vaquita marina, cuya pesca incidental es el resultado de la captura ilegal del pez Totoaba, con el acuerdo del 9 de julio pasado, se dio inicio al establecimiento de esquemas para determinar el cierre total o parcial a la pesca por actividades ilegales que ayudarán a la vigilancia y supervisión en el hábitat de la vaquita, así como el retiro de redes no autorizadas recuperadas diariamente. Es importante señalar que con estas acciones no se mina ni se disminuye la protección en el área de tolerancia cero, establecida en el Acuerdo Marco de septiembre de 2020. Por el contrario, se fortalece al posibilitar nuevas medidas de protección más eficientes. Las medidas establecidas recientemente por el gobierno mexicano complementan y refuerzan el marco normativo para garantizar la protección de las especies amenazadas y el hábitat en el Alto Golfo de California. Todo ello en un marco de respeto y con el establecimiento de medidas que contribuyan al bienestar de la población y con la amplia participación de gobiernos, instituciones, investigadores, comunidades y organizaciones de la sociedad civil. Gracias. Thank you for your comment. I see no more request. Uh, dear colleagues, with this, we have now concluded the examination of our agenda item 7A. Let's proceed then. Dear colleagues, we are now moving to our agenda item 7B on the state of conservation reports of the properties inscribed on the World Heritage List. Like for item 7A, we will first discuss the reports concerning cultural properties, followed by the mixed and the natural properties. The regions will be presented in the same regional order as for item 7A. First, Africa. Second, Arab states. Third, Asia and the Pacific. Fourth, Europe and North America. Fifth, Latin America and the Caribbean. However, as for item 7A, in order to facilitate attendance of the debate by all experts, the Secretariat has prepared a specific timetable for the examination of the state of conservation reports 
taken into account as much as feasible the different time zones. We will therefore start today with the examination of two cultural properties located in the Asia Pacific region. I'd like to give the floor to the delegation of Kyrgyzstan, which requested the State of Conservation Report on the Muslim of Koja Ahmed Yasawi, Kazakhstan, to be opened for discussion, to present to the committee the reason why it made such a request. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. We open the discussion to reflect condition in the territory of the property and its wider setting more accurately in the decision. Our amendment would be concerned the paragraph six. The World Heritage Convention protects the territory of the property and its buffer zone. In this light, the Republic of Kazakhstan did not implement any project within the buffer zone or in the territory of the World Heritage property. It is clear that the projects of the spiritual and cultural center are placed outside the buffer zone. Uh, however, in respect of the World Heritage property, the State Party of the Republic of Kazakhstan has completed for these projects the heritage impact assessments in full accordance with the operational guidelines and the international standards before their competition and informed the World Heritage Center that there is no negative impact to the mausoleum in 2019. We have discussed with the members of the committee these documents during the 43rd session in Baku and addressed positively the efforts of the Republic of Kazakhstan in improving the state of conservation of the Kaja Ahmed Yasavi Mausoleum World Heritage Property. The state of conservation report submitted by the state party in 2020 provides us with all information that confirms that all decisions of the World Heritage Committee, as well as the recommendations of the international expert group within the framework of the heritage impact assessments were implemented by the state party. We would like to highlight from the report that the projects of the second phase of the spiritual and cultural center in Turkestan are located in the wider setting of the World Heritage property. Nevertheless, the, these projects do follow the heights that are respecting the historic visual integrity of the mausoleum as all buildings are lower than 27 meters. Therefore, there are no high-rise buildings, neither in the wider setting nor in the buffer zone of the property. There are no modern high-rise constructions in the buffer zone. At the same time, the Republic of Kazakhstan, together with the International Expert Group, has elaborated and established a legal mechanism of view access protection area in the wider setting of Kaja Ahmed Yasavi Mausoleum property. The effectiveness of this tool for property planning of the city was confirmed in the decision of the World Heritage Committee taken in its 43rd session. Moreover, the Ministry of Culture and Sports of the Republic of Kazakhstan has created the Methodological Council. The council considers all projects related to the mausoleum its buffer zone and to the spiritual and cultural center in uh, Turkestan. Um, the above mentioned efforts of the state party led to the introduction of such complex system of coordination at the national level when all construction activities and urban planning regulations in the territory of cultural heritage sites are carefully considered and assessed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to invite Mr. Feng Jing, Chief of the Asia Pacific of the World Heritage Center and ECMOS to respond to this comment. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Salam alaikum to everyone. 
I think uh, uh, in response to the uh, comments provided by the distinguished uh, member of the Committee of Kyrgyzstan, the World Heritage Center, first of all, wish to express gratitude to the Hasak authorities for providing a report on the state of conservation of the property, as well as several sites of technical documents, including heritage impact assessments, the first group of phase one projects in 2019, and then a second group in March 2020, including three construction projects in the buffer zones and the, within the wider siting of the property. I think the in response to the questions regarding the draft decision raised by the Kyrgyzstan, please allow me to provide the following comments. For paragraph six of the draft decision refers to the HIAs provided by the state party in July 2019 as original HIAs, I think moved to the first slide, including seven projects. So these projects have been implemented without considering the concerns expressed by the World Health Center and the advisory bodies. Furthermore, the three phase two projects, the Hasak Drama Theater, Eastern Market Karawan Sarai, and the Hoja Ahmed Yasawi Museum were submitted in March 2020. And despite the 2018 advisory mission and, state, uh, and the September 2020 ECMOS technical review that highlighted the need for modifications and the reconsideration of the projects, the Karawan Sarayan complex was reportedly inaugurated in March 2021. It now seems that these HIAs were submitted after the work had been approved and construction had started. So these circumstances led the World Health Center and the advisory bodies to express concern with the current mechanisms of communication with the state party, which does not allow any comment concerning large-scale development projects that ECOMOS might provide comments to be addressed, especially in relation to mitigation measures. It also does not allow for the committee to express its views on such projects, as expressed in the draft decision, paragraph eight. Now, coming to the reactor monitoring mission in paragraph 13, I think uh, this is also in view of the current major development that impacts adversely on the OUV of the property. I've come to that where we will be adopting the draft decision. Mr. Chairperson, ECOMOS may provide further comments on this. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, ECOMOS, please, you have the floor. Right, thank you, Mr. Chair. The mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yasabi is a sacred symbol of Turkestan and of a vast region of the Turkic speaking world. It was designed to dominate its surrounding landscape, and that is acknowledged in the Statement of Outstanding Universal Value. The recent constructed high-rise amphitheater building at 20.26 meters, together with the new Koja Ahmed Yasabi Museum at 6,7 meters, now dominate the skyline. This new museum building under construction is located just in front of the main axis of the World Heritage property and competes visually with the mausoleum and will have an adverse impact on its OUV. Some of these projects appear to have been constructed in excess of current uh, height restrictions, something that was examined at a national level by a group of experts. Their conclusions called for a new approach in which future developments would respect the property's OUV. This new approach includes a special scientific methodological council already referred to, uh, created in September 2019, and the development of a master plan that could signal a change in direction for redevelopment. Both the expert group and the Scientific Methodological Council have unanimously recommended that new projects must respect both the national legislation and the requirements of the World Heritage Convention. The latest HIA submitted were carried out in this more positive context. Unfortunately, they were still carried out late and in instances after approvals had been given and the buildings were under construction. This is a source of considerable concern, leaving no opportunity to mitigate adverse impacts that are identified or for the committee to comment on projects. A further major concern is that an extensive urban redevelopment is underway in advance of this new master plan 
and the updated Visual Access Protection Zone. Um, and this has been complete with before this was completed or assessed by the committee. These concerns are analyzed and expressed in the State of Conservation Report prepared by the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies now before the committee. While ICOMOS welcomes the aforementioned new approach, this still needs to be put in practice and framed by the master plan that does not promote development that impacts adversely on the OUV. Therefore, ICOMOS joined the World Heritage Center in recommending that the committee request the state party to invite a joint World Heritage Center ICOMOS reactive monitoring mission to the property and as a mechanism to continue communication and consultation within the collaborative framework provided by the convention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'd like to know whether there are any comments. Russia, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we would like to support the, the distinguished delegate of Kyrgyzstan, who rightly highlighted uh, that the development project of the spiritual cultural center of Turkestan um, uh, are located outside the buffer zone, which is not within the protected territory by the World Heritage Convention. Uh, nevertheless, the Republic of Kazakhstan uh, conducted the required heritage impact assessments on these projects and informed the World Heritage Center about the neutral and positive impact of these projects in 2019 and 2020 in accordance with the operational guidelines and the ICAMOS guidelines for heritage impact assessment for cultural world heritage. Uh, the State Party has identified the attributes of the OUV of the Mausoleum of Hoja Ahmed Yasavi World Heritage Property. Following the State of Conservation report submitted, these attributes were identified with the assistance of the International Expert Group and improved during the focus group meetings with the local community of Turkestan in April 2019. Moreover, the State Party has also identified the wider values of the World Heritage property. These values are of national and regional level and contribute to the appreciation of the mausoleum also with contribution of monuments located in the buffer zone. The heritage impact assessment submitted in 2020 confirmed that the three development projects of the second phase of the Turkestan spiritual and cultural center have no negative impact, neither on the OUV nor on the wider values of the mausoleum. Considering the results of the heritage impact assessments prepared by the Republic of Kazakhstan, as well as the elaborative heritage protection system of Kazakhstan, which involves the careful consideration of new developments plan for implementation within the buffer zone, uh, and or near the buffer zone of any World Heritage properties, we believe that it is vital to also remove paragraph seven of the draft decision. After the recent nomination of the city of Turkestan as regional capital, a major urban renewal will take place. The city will double in population in the next 10 years, adapting the city to its need and creating the necessary public facilities to improve the standards of living are rights that should be granted and recognized. The proposed development is also adapting the city to meet its touristic expectations, bringing economic development and welfare and helping to diversify the city's touristic offer and keep the tourist capacity within sustainable limits while protecting the mausoleum for future generations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Now, Ethiopia, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair, and good morning to all. Um, we fully support the amendments presented by uh, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, we support it based on what was by previous delegations that Kazakhstan has made all efforts and complied with all the rules to ensure that it balances it's the aspiration of its people towards economic development, and development of tourism, and the protection of this very important and symbolic site. 
as was elaborated by previous speakers, the development projects is outside of the buffer zone. The country conducted a heritage impact assessment study, which proved without any shadow of a doubt that the OUV of the, the site is not affected. Uh, the involvement of the local community was also highlighted in its support because it will bring bread and butter to that community. Based on that, the available information received by the State Party of Kazakhstan, which was prepared in a transparent, scientific, and detailed manner, it should be enough for us, for this committee, to accept the amendments in Para 13 of the draft decision as presented by our friends from Kazakhstan. There is therefore no need for a reactive mission, and we agree to the request for, to request the State Party to submit uh, a report by February, an updated report by February 1, 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, Hungary, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hungary welcomes the steps taken by Kazakhstan to conserve the mausoleum of Koja Ahmad Yasavi Heritage. Our country appreciates with satisfaction the implementation of the view access protection area. The introduction of the hate limit in the view access protection area strengthened the control over construction, not only in the property and the buffer zone, but also in a wider setting of the void heritage site. It is necessary to highlight that this voluntary step and regulation regarding the height of the buildings in this particularly vulnerable area taken by the state party set a good example for other state parties dealing with similar challenging situation. The adaptation of this management tool serves the protection of the U OUV properly. In view of the above, Hungary supports the amendment of the dress decision submitted by the Kyrgyz Republic and 14 distinguished state parties. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Australia, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Australia also supports the amendments put forward by Kyrgyzstan and others and many of the statements of the previous speakers, so I won't repeat them. We do, however, appreciate the concerns of ICMOS in relation to the need to respect and protect the setting of this architectural and religious masterpiece. We note that the State Party has demonstrated its commitment to balancing the need for development in the city with the protection of OUV of the mausoleum. And we note here that there is a need to protect the setting but the attributes of OUV are the architectural and design elements of the mausoleum itself. We're aware that a new master plan for the city provides a development framework within which individual development projects may be assessed. And this includes development guidelines that recognise the OUV of the property. And we do urge the state party to forward the plan to the World Heritage Centre for review by the advisory bodies as soon as possible. And finally, Chair, we'd like to commend the State Party for their engagement with local and international experts who have shared their expertise in developing the view access plan and planning guidelines, and who are undertaking scientific research contributing to the conservation of the mausoleum. We further note that these conservation efforts have included the revival of the traditional craft of handmade roof tiles. We'd like to say that this collaborative process offers a model for other State Parties and that the knowledge that it's generating is a benefit to us all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Nigeria, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson. Nigeria wants to align herself with previous speakers who have seen the efforts by the State Party of Kazata and uh, from the State of Conservation reports, the heritage uh, There's uh, some problem with uh, the signal. We can't hear your voice. Uh, uh, maybe I come back to you. I give the floor to China first, then I come back to you. China, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. And good morning to everyone from Paris. The city 
of uh, Turkestan is an important site on the Silk Road. And China pays close attention to the situation around the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed uh, uh, Yasawi. China commands the work conducted by the State Party of the Republic of Kazakhstan since the decision adopted on the 43rd session of the committee in Baku, including the creation of a special advisory scientific methodological council, public engagement, the development of a holistic interpretation strategy for the property and the archaeological park, as well as the development of the master plan. China understands the master plan is of great importance in pre preserving the property. Therefore, such a master plan should be based on thorough analysis and has to be approved by the government before its submission to the center to ensure its uh, implementation. China would uh, also like to encourage further joint research conducted by the state party and the advisory body on the development impacts to the property. And we believe it is very important to take into consideration of individual situation of each property. After all, the measures of conservation for monuments are different from those for historical sites. In view of the foregoing, my delegation joins other delegations in support for the proposed amendment and encourage the joint efforts to further improve the conservation of this important property. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Now, Saudi Arabia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dear Chairperson, we would like to make clarifications regarding the wider setting of the mausoleum of Hoja Ahmed Yasawi, World Heritage Property, highlighted in three important elements. First, and most important, the mausoleum is a single standing monument. The protection, appro the protection approach implemented differs significantly from the protection approach that is done for cities. In this context, <clears throat> It is necessary to highlight that the attributes that convey the outstanding universal value of the mausoleum are exclusively located within the historic structure of this single standing monument. These attributes do not reside in any urban patterns or residential districts of the city of Turkestan. Secondly, all development, all construction or any construction projects are in full alignment with operational guidelines. The Republic of Kazakhstan has consequently, consequently shown the, its commitment to follow all prescriptions related to the World Heritage Property and its buffer zone, which are the areas protected under the World Heritage Convention. The State Party has constantly informed the committee about its attempt to initiate or even permit large-scale restoration or new construction projects that may have an impact of, on the outstanding universal value of the property. Although the development projects of the spiritual and cultural center of Turkestan are located outside the buffer zone, the Republic of Kazakhstan has conducted required heritage impact assessments in accordance with paragraph 108 bis of the operational guidelines before the completion of these projects. Before these projects were launched, the state party has informed about its intentions to the World Heritage Center. My third point, Mr. Chairperson and dear colleagues, that legal instruments are in place and fully implemented. In order to additionally enhance the effectiveness of, and the, of the protection of the World Heritage Property, the Republic of Kazakhstan has in, to introduce a specially developed regulatory policy of view access protection zones. This serves as a tool to regulate the wider setting of the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yasawi World Heritage Property. This effective regulation is very important 
because it's an extra step, and it was conducted in 2019, as well as by the state of uh, as well as by the state of conservation report in the property. It is necessary to welcome these efforts of the Republic of Kazakhstan, as these additional measures are representing an approach for integrated, effective management and protection of the wider setting of the World Heritage property, rather than an obligation of the state party under the convention. Additionally, the Republic of Kazakhstan has significantly improved its national heritage legislation, which led to the introduction of a set of actions necessary to approve any development projects plan for implementation within the buffer zones and wider settings of the World Heritage Property. In this slide, we would like to welcome the efforts of the Republic of Kazakhstan to protect the wider setting of the World Heritage Pro Property and congratulate with these achievements in the National Heritage Protection System. Saudi Arabia reiterates its support to the amendment submitted by Kyrgyzstan and what has been submitted by our colleagues here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Nigeria is okay, okay with you? Nigeria. Uh, not yet. Okay. Oh, ma'am, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Excellencies, Mr. Chair. Oman also noted the great efforts made by the State Party to ensure the utmost conservation of the property outstandings, universal value. Also, we would like to welcome and thank the State Party for the monitoring mechanism established to keep and preserve this, uh, the site, the site's excellent status of conservation. Additionally, we have welcomed the drafting of the new master plan which will work to further control the urban development within the property and its wider setting, especially that it takes into, it, into account the preservation of different values of the property. We, in, we, in, we, all, we also in, in, introduce, or we also in, do, endorse the statement of previous state parties. We believe that more time and dialogue between the state party and the advisory body will lead to bribery Will, will lead to drive properly all the efforts and intervention in a way that will not impact negatively to the OUV and its attributes. In conclusion, Oman supports the amendment of the draft decision. I thank you. Thank you for your comment. Now, Brazil, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to all. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, after all that has been said by different delegations uh, concerning the amendments that has, uh, we have seen gather so much support from the committee members, there is not much more that we would like to, say, to add. But there are nonetheless a few points that we would like to stress. First, from, the, uh, from what we have read in the ECOMOS report and from the information we received from state parties, we understand that the projects that have raised concern on the part of the advisory board are not located within the perimeter of the site, nor in its buffer zone. We also understand that although there may be some discussion on how this project may affect the general value to which the mausoleum is associated or the wider setting of Turkestan city, they do not seem to impact on the OUV of the site itself. In any case, Mr. President, we believe that the committee would exceed its scope if it were to pronounce itself on this issue. For that reason, we support strongly the amendments presented by Kyrgyzstan. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Now, Nigeria, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And sorry for the uh, issue with the network. Uh, just like the other previous speaker, Nigeria we would like to express our concern regarding the implementation of the reactive monetary mission. In this case, reactive monetary mission, according to the operational guidelines, paragraph 169, is the activity of reporting by the Secretariat, other sector of UNESCO, and the advisory bodies to the Committee on the State of the Conservation of Specific World Heritage Property that are under threat. However, based on the State of Conservation Report, Heritage Impact Assessment Reports, and earlier decisions of the World Heritage Committee, 
it is clear that there is no threat to the OUV of the mausoleum Okoja Ahmed Yasawi World Heritage Property. Therefore, the use of the reactive monitoring mission instrument is not appropriate for this case. And so we support the amendment as done by the other countries that earlier spoke. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Now, Bosnia Herzegovina, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, D'abord, euh, je me prononce, euh, la Bosnie se prononce en faveur de l'amendement de Kyrgyzstan. Oh, you lost the sound. Yeah, we can't hear you, Excellency. Yeah, no sound. No. Maybe I come back to you. Uh, I give the floor to Egypt. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Egypt supports the amendments presented by Kyrgyzstan to the draft decision. We would like to admit that in response to the recommendation of the World Heritage Committee, the Republic of Kazakhstan paid special attention to the regulation of development projects outside the buffer zone in the wider setting of the property under consideration. According to the docu documentation submitted by the state party, it is clear that this mechanism, which is based on scientific research and visual analysis, was integrated into existing urban planning tools to ensure additional protection to both the World Heritage property and its wider setting, as it was reflected in the previous decision of the World Heritage Committee. So uh, Egypt would like to support the amendments made by Kyrgyzstan to the draft decision. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your comment. Now, Bosnia Herzegovina, you have the floor. Je vous remercie. La Bosnie soutient l'amendement de Kyrgyzstan. Nous félicitons. Kazakhstan pour tous les efforts effectués sur ce site et autour. Et je tiens à dire quelque chose concernant la nécessité de faire appel aux experts locaux de travailler en étroite coopération avec les experts de, de, de l'ICOMOS et les autres qui viennent sur les sites. Je trouve que ça pourrait éviter des malentendus et épargner beaucoup d'autres efforts et des, 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 des moyens matériels. Par, par exemple, ce qui est intéressant, c'est l'objet qui est, qui est dans la zone, et je parle de, de, de la mosquée, où on avait demandé de, de ne pas dépasser la taille des, des minarets. Ça, ça a été fait, et en même temps, cela a perturber un peu la, 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 les, les proportions de, de, de ce monument. Et je ne veux rien ajouter à ce que mes prédécesseurs ont déjà dit. Je vous remercie. Thank you for your comment. Norway, please, you have the floor. Norway, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving us the floor. Norway would like to start with expressing our deepest sympathy with the people of China, and particularly in Chengshu, the Henan province, with the extreme heavy rain and flooding. This terrible news reached us this very morning. Uh, as we all know from the documents, the city of Turkestan will grow remarkably in the coming decades with many developing projects. It is therefore of utmost importance that the state party conduct the necessary planning and impact assessments to safeguard the World Heritage Site and its outstanding universal values. Norway commends the state party for taking these challenges seriously and its efforts to establish the necessary framework for a sustainable, 
development of the city, including protecting the World Heritage Site in its wider setting. At the same time, we would underline the need for closer collaboration and dialogue between the state party, the World Heritage Center, and the advisory bodies before decisions on plans and projects permissions are made. We would suggest that the, this thing, the Distinguished Committee reflects the need for closer collaboration in the decision from this meeting. We also consider that a reactive monitoring mission would be a constructive step to strength, strengthen the collaboration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much for the kind words you expressed for the flood stricken area, people. Uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, now I give the floor to Spain. You have the floor. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Eh, España siempre ha sido consciente de las dificultades que se tienen que tener en cuenta cuando queremos combinar los equilibrios entre desarrollo y preservación del patrimonio. Y ese es el reto en el que se enfrenta ahora eh, la ciudad de Turquestán, en Kazajstán. Y nosotros hemos querido, en cualquier caso, y lo diré con toda brevedad porque considero innecesario reiterar argumentos que otras delegaciones ya han dado, hemos querido copatrocinar porque de un lado conocemos las dificultades y de otro sabemos los esfuerzos que el Estado ha hecho para para intentar preservar ese patrimonio en esa combinación con el, el futuro desarrollo que se plantea por el crecimiento anunciado. Creemos que, que la, la, los compromisos que adquiere, junto a lo ya realizado y las evaluaciones de impacto cultural que va a poderse sufrir, eh, son, es necesario respaldarlos y por eso copatrocinamos dando un voto de confianza al Estado. Sumamos a las delegaciones que han dicho que es necesario conjugar los esfuerzos del Estado con el centro de patrimonio y con eh, los órganos de evaluación, pero pensamos que es necesario que se, se tenga este margen de confianza y flexibilidad del Estado para que pueda llevar los planes que, que adelante, que adquiere con este compromiso. Y en ese sentido, como somos conscientes de que tenemos instrumentos suficientes para evaluar la implementación de esos compromisos, pues queremos respaldar y lo hemos hecho copatrocinando la enmienda. Muchas gracias. Thank you for your comment. Now, Thailand, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Thailand would also like to express our heartfelt sympathy for the devastation resulting from the flooding in Hainan. Uh, Thailand supports the proposed amendment by Kyrgyzstan. Just wanted to, to highlight a few facts. The heritage impact assessment prepared by Kazakhstan indicates that the potential impact on the OUV were analyzed and mitigation measures proposed to assure that there be no negative impact from the development projects on the property. Um, we also like to note that the OUV attributes as well as other wider national, regional and local values were appropriately identified by qualified international cultural heritage experts and confirmed by the local community via focus group meetings. The role of the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary team of 15 international and local experts in preparing the SOC and the HIA reports reflect the commitment of the State Party of Kazakhstan to engage all concerned parties in the protection and management of the property in full compliance with recommendations by the advisory body. Therefore, Thailand would like to express our support for the amendment to the draft decision. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words and sympathy for the flooded stricken area in China. And uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, now I give the floor to South Africa. You have the floor. Thank you, Chairman, for giving us the floor. And we join many delegations in extending our words of solidarity and comfort to, to the people of China for the floods that struck the, your beautiful country and your area. We join many delegations in supporting the proposed draft amendments. 
we we agree with many points articulated in support of this draft uh, amendment. In particular, we welcome the fact that the, all the construction projects that are envisaged are in full compliance with the operational guidelines and that the heritage impact assessment that the state party commissioned has indicated that there are minimal risks that would detract the property from its uniqueness or its uh, unique attributes. We also welcome the fact that the draft development master plan has been developed and that is articulated by the previous speaker that the, the museum itself is a single standing monument that will not be impacted by the development. We also support the proposal for a visit of the deployment of the reactive monitoring mission and for a constructive dialogue between the state party and the advisory bodies and the secretariat. With these few words, as I said, we support the proposed Thank you. Thank you. We have concluded our statement, Chair. Yeah. Chair, your mic is off. Mr. Chair, your mic is off. Mr. Chair, your microphone is muted. Thank you. No, it does not work. It's okay? No? It's muted again. No. No. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Can you hear me? It's okay. We can hear you now. Okay. Uh, first, uh, thank South Africa for your kind words and thank for your comment. Now, Guatemala, please. You have the floor. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Agradecemos los reportes del Estado parte y toda la información provista sobre este sitio. Vemos con gran satisfacción este caso con relación al compromiso y la coordinación que se intenta realizar entre el Estado parte, el Centro de Patrimonio Mundial y los órganos asesores, lo cual refleja muy buenos resultados como todos los demás participantes de este comité han expresado. Para no repetir lo que otros miembros del comité ya han dicho, Únicamente quiero hacer énfasis en el comentario del representante de la delegación de Brasil. Debemos tener cuidado en el espacio físico donde deseamos aplicar nuestras decisiones, ya que existe un límite espacial de jurisdicción que nos permite actuar y fuera del cual este comité no tiene competencia. Los reportes indican que el valor universal excepcional del mausoleo no está en un nivel de riesgo que deba preocuparnos, lo cual es justamente el objetivo de los, estados, de los reportes de Estado de Conservación. Felicitamos al Estado parte por todos los esfuerzos realizados e instamos a continuar la cooperación y el diálogo entre todas las partes involucradas. No tenemos ningún problema en aceptar las enmiendas propuestas y apoyadas por otros miembros de este comité. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Mr. Jingfeng and ECMOS for response. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, very briefly, I think three points uh, regard. First, 
after listening to the uh, interventions by the di distinguished uh, committee members, I would like to bring to the attention of the committee that the evolution for the preservation of cultural heritage, I think also being involved from the past monumental approach to the current, I will quote, I think uh, also uh, from ECOMO side, there is the 2005 Xi'an Declaration on the conservation of the setting of historical structure, sites, and areas. From UNESCO side, November 2011, uh, the General Conference adopted the UNESCO recommendation on the preservation of historical urban landscape. As the dis distinguished uh, ambassador of China uh, said, the city of Turkestan is in the urban setting. Second point, I think distinguished committee members mentioned that the OUV part. Uh, in fact, uh, the, I, 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 we have to review all the things in, uh, in, in line with the OUV, where in the integrity part, the state party said, since Turkestan is situated in the vast plain, any high-rise buildings outside the buffer zone would have a significant impact on the visual integrity of the Muslim. So I stop here uh, for the quote. Then third point, I really, I think, uh, uh, dear chairperson, distinguished committee members, we are reviewing the proposed amendment of the draft decision. I heard that several uh, committee members also mentioned, in particular, uh, the paragraph 13. So I wish to speak as a former member of this committee who serviced between 92 and 97. It is important to recall that the committee, in its decision 43.7.1, regarding the evaluation of the reactor monitoring process, the, the, noted that the recommendations formulated in the evaluation refer to improvement of the current per, uh, practices and do not call for structure changes nor amendment to the, uh, the statutory document. And they requested all stakeholders of the convention to take them on board and implement them at their level as soon as possible. This was made in 2019, end of quote. During the last two days of the uh, present session, the committee members stressed the importance of reactor monitoring missions to address conservation issues at World Heritage properties. At this moment, we're reviewing the state of conservation of the uh, Muslim of Hoja Ahmed Yasawi in Kazakhstan, it is desirable that the committee maintain consistency in its approach and defend the credibility of the World Heritage System. As you all can see from the working document 44.7b, in view of the current major development that impacts on the OUV, the center and advisory bodies requested uh, this uh, reactor monitor mission. The mission might consider how future development might support rather than endanger the OUV or the property, and also review all the major development projects on the site. Furthermore, similar cases on the state of conservation of other cultural properties in Central Asia, such as Bukhara and Samarkand, a reactor monitoring mission was dispatched to the property and the state party concerned could benefit from effective dialogue with the World Health Center and ECOMOS and work together to find appropriate solutions to address the conservation issues at these World Heritage properties. So taking, into all, taking all this into consideration, I would sincerely hope that the committee could give a second thought to paragraph 13 of the draft decision, which recommends that the state party invite a joint World Heritage Center ECMOS reactor monitoring mission to the property. The monitoring mission requested by the committee to the Muslim of Haji Asam Yasawi, that so far, the two advisory missions to the property to the, uh, at dispatch to the property, but no official reactor monitoring missions has been sent to the site since its inscription in 2003. So thank you, uh, very, uh, thank you for your kind attention, Mr. Chairperson. ECOMOS may add additional technical comments. Thank you.
Yeah, Yikomos, please. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. ICOMOS will be very brief in its following uh, uh, points. Uh, ICOMOS would like to stress that at this point in time, the draft master plan has been, uh, is, is being drafted, but has not yet been uh, submitted to the World Heritage Center, oh, sorry, to the committee for, um, to, to look at, and yet projects are ongoing. Um, and this is one of the reasons ICOMOS recommends in line with that, what the uh, World Heritage Center is recommending, a reactive monitoring mission. And secondly, as uh, members of the committee have pointed out, uh, the city of Turkestan will be growing quite fast in the future. And therefore, it is critical to understand the context. And to um, it is also critical, therefore, at this junction for a reactive monitoring mission to be able to advise also on the appropriateness of the current planning tools uh, in the context. ICOMOS stresses that the reactive monitoring mission process could aid in communication and clarification. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I see no more uh, questions in the comments. So I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 44-7B.31 concerning this property. But uh, before doing so, I'd like to ask the rapporteur if she has received any amendments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before presenting the amendment, I have an announcement. There was a typo in the document 7B in French. The draft decision is referred to as 44.7B.33, while it should have been uh, 44.7B.31. Um, we have received an amendment signed by a number of committee members. Uh, there were as you can see on the screen, um, there were no amendments to the first five paragraphs of the draft decision. So we can look at paragraph six. Um, so follow, following paragraphs are proposed for deletion. Paragraph six, seven, eight, nine. So now we continue with new paragraph six requests the state party to submit relevant sections of the master plan to the World Heritage Center and to ensure that the master plan, A, recognizes the OUV of the property, B, includes the view axis protection area that prohibits any new development within the area from exceeding the seven meter high, height limit. And 6C is proposed for deletion. We continue with new paragraph seven. Also welcomes the analysis of development undertaken by a group of national and international experts. Also acknowledges their call for future developments to respect the OUV of the property and that the expert group and the scientific methodological council have anonymously recommended that new projects must respect both national legislation and the requirements of the World Heritage Convention, and that no construction within the buffer zone, view access protection area, and Turkestan spiritual and cultural center should be undertaken without notification to the World Heritage Center and a heritage impact assessment following paragraphs 108 bis, 118 bis, and 172 of the operational guidelines and urges the state party to address these recommendations. New paragraph eight, um, the original paragraph 12 um, has no amendments, Mr. Chair. And we continue. Next paragraph is proposed for deletion. We have new paragraph nine, which is the last paragraph of this draft decision finally requests the state party to submit to the World Heritage Center by 1 February 2022 an updated report on the state of conservation of the property and the implementation of the above for examination by the World Heritage Committee at its 45th session and as usual we remove the date. These are all the amendments Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, since there were several revisions on the draft decision I think it will be better for us to adopt the text of 44.7b.31, paragraph by paragraph. So uh, let's give this uh, rapporteur 
you see, I, I some time to put the text. I think already the text. Now we, Mr. Rapporteur, can you go through the text paragraph by paragraph now? Thank you. From the first one, first paragraph. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have no amendments to the paragraph one. Uh, from paragraph one, two, three, four, five. That's no re revision, no amendment. So approved. Approved. Six, paragraph six. Approved. Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, paragraphs, yes. paragraphs six, seven, eight, and nine are proposed for deletion from the original draft decision, and we have a new paragraph six proposed. Yes. Any objections? So, it's, so approved. Go ahead. We have new paragraph seven with modifications to the original draft decision. Yeah. Paragraph 11. Hmm. Approved. Approved. Go ahead. We have new paragraph eight, origin, original paragraph 12 of the draft decision without any changes, Mr. Chair. Approved. Approved, go ahead. We have um, next paragraph proposed for deletion, original paragraph 13 of the draft decision, and we have new paragraph nine, which is the last paragraph of the draft decision about requesting the um, updated report, Mr. Chair. Hmm. Ah, Bahram, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And in light of uh, the clarifications presented by e-commerce and the World Heritage Center, uh, perhaps an advisory mission would be an appropriate uh, way moving forward. Um, uh, we have no objection of the deletion of paragraph 13 as proposed by members of the committee. Um, they just might want to consider um, the advisory mission. Uh, again, it's a non-binding uh, recommendation that would result from that mission, but I think it would be clearer for the state party and the committee as well to take appropriate decisions in the future uh, as to the uh, property in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Norway, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Norway would like to suggest that we keep the last part of the original uh, para 13, uh, starting with uh, request the state party to invite, uh, as a matter of urgency, a joint World Heritage uh, uh, Center and e-commerce reactive monitoring mission, and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. Ethiopia, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, we insist on maintaining the original drafting as proposed by Kyrgyzstan uh, and that we don't see any need for a reactive monitoring mission. And the argument raised by the Secretariat is really baffling, to say the least, in asking us for consistency because we requested such missions uh, for other uh, items, examples. It is the same Secretariat that suggested a deletion a deletion of a World Heritage Site without any reactive permission. Where is the consistency from the Secretariat and the experts? Let's be serious. So if you want to be inconsistent, we can also be inconsistent. So we do not support at all the proposals made to maintain, I mean, to modify the uh, amendments that were proposed. There is no need for reactive mission. Proper studies have been done. The State Party will submit an updated report uh, on February 2022 or the next session. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for your comment. Russia, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, distinguished colleagues, um, I would like to uh, uh, express my agreement with the previous speaker, distinguished representative uh, of Ethiopia, uh, that uh, we don't see any particular need um, uh, or legal grounds to invite the reactive monetary mission. The State Party of Kazakhstan, as we can learn from the, the detailed reports prepared in a scientific manner with involvement of international experts, strictly follows uh, all the recommendations of the World Heritage Committee expressed in its decision 43.com. 7B67. The State Party, following the recommendations, arranged a capacity building uh, workshop in 2020 concerning the submission procedure of the information regarding all developments that may impact the OUV of the property. In the decision, the committee positively assessed the work carried out by Kazakhstan and requested the state party to submit any further projects related to the Turkestan Spiritual Cultural Center project to the World Heritage Center for review by the advisory bodies. The state party was also requested to provide information on the progress of the implementation of the projects. In this regard, the Republic of Kazakhstan has prepared as part of a report on the state of conservation, a detailed objective scientific monitoring. This state of conservation report was timely submitted by Kazakhstan to the World Heritage Center for considering uh, by the World Heritage Committee at its uh, upcoming 44th session. According to the documentation, ICAMOS has considered the report and prepared a technical review in September uh, 2020. After receiving the ICAMOS review, the Republic of Kazakhstan has prepared the official detailed response to it. Uh, to our regret, uh, the answer of ICOMOS to this response is not present in the documentation. In this context, it is necessary to note that this transparent system of consideration of new development projects of the Republic of Kazakhstan is open for stakeholders both on international and national levels. Once again, distinguished members of the committee, here is worth pointing out the fact that there are no constructions within the boundary of the property or its buffer zone. Uh, the conclusion uh, is obvious that uh, uh, we don't see uh, the necessity of uh, inviting uh, the reactive monitoring mission. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Nigeria, please, you have the floor. Mr. Chair, Nigeria do not see a reason for inviting the reactive monitoring mission. And so I agree and share, and also want to support the position taken by Ethiopia and Russia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Saudi Arabia, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Saudi Arabia would like to join other members in uh, uh, insisting on the deletion on uh, paragraph 13, since there is so much progress that has been made thus far, and there is no need for a reactive monitoring mission. As for the uh, advisory mission, or, uh, I th we think that it is premature, maybe, maybe for next year, when the report is submitted, we can discuss such thing uh, based on the findings of the uh, report submitted by the state party. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, can we all agree on the amendment of what's in it? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, Stan, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we uh, would like to concur with the um, distinguished delegates that have expressed their opinion earlier. And we, we Kyrgyz Republic also doesn't see the need for the monitoring mission because uh, the Republic of Kazakhstan has showed um, its commitment to working closely with ICOMOS and with the World Heritage uh, Convention. And uh, it showed its commitment to um, um, take into account all the recommendations. That's why we uh, concur with the um, previous delegations that expressed the opinion that 
um, um, monitoring mission is not necessary. That's why we would like to stick to, uh, to, the, uh, to the amendment proposed by the Kyrgyz Republic and other delegations. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Hungary, please, you have the floor. Hi, uh, Hungary supports the original um, amendment by Kyrgyzstan and agrees with Ethiopia. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oman, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Also, Oman would like to add its voice to the previous speakers and would like to, to support the previous amendment provided by um, Kyrgyzstan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Egypt, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair, and we also concur with, uh, with previous interventions that uh, there is no need for having uh, here a uh, reactive monitoring mission as uh, mentioning, and we do believe that having it would, uh, would be inconsistent with the Operation Guidelines 169, so it's not applicable in this case, and so we'll, we totally support uh, the, the removal of this reference. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. South Africa, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson. We, South Africa, agreed with the original uh, draft uh, amendment by Kyrgyzstan and concurs with the uh, with the interventions made by previous colleagues speakers. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Brazil, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brazil uh, supports uh, proposals by previous speakers, previous colleagues of the deletion. We do not see any need for a mission at this stage because basically uh, the projects are outside the buffer zone and uh, we think this is out of our scope of action. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your comment. Guatemala, please, you have the floor. Muchas gracias, Presidente. Um, solamente estar de acuerdo con todos nuestros honorables delegados que me precedieron a la palabra. Eh, haciendo siempre énfasis en eh, la disponibilidad del Estado de Kazajstán en el, eh, el diálogo y la comunicación entre los órganos evaluadores del Centro de Patrimonio Mundial, además teniendo en cuenta que eh, se les está solicitando que emitan un informe eh, dentro de prácticamente seis meses. Entonces creo que eh, estamos de acuerdo en mantener la enmienda. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you for your comment. Uh, I wanted to know, Norway, uh, do you like to join the consensus? Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we can accept the, um, the amendment. Uh, uh, we notice uh, the um, almost consensus uh, in the committee, so we accept it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, now we have went through all the text. If there are no other comments, I now declare the draft decision 44-7B.31 adopted as a mandate. I'd like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about this property. Syria, please, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous exprimons notre solidarité avec les habitants de la province de Hénin suite aux inondations. Nous nous félicitons pour l'adoption du projet de décision à base de l'amendement présenté par le Kyrgyzstan et les co-signataires. La République arabe syrienne félicite l'État parti le Kazakhstan pour la qualité du rapport d'état de conservation qui reflète une grande maîtrise des mesures de préservation de la VUE, du, de la mausolée du Koja Ahmad Yassawi. Les études d'impact, le plan directeur ainsi que les modes de partenariat et de travail entre les autorités nationales, locales et internationales sont un exemple. Nous invitons l'État parti, le Kazakhstan, à partager cette meilleure pratique avec les États parties concernés. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you for your comment. Any more? Oh, 
I see now. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, we can have 10 minutes break, technical break.
Dear colleagues, now let's begin, continue. Now I give the floor to Kazakhstan for two minutes statement. <clears throat> Merci, Monsieur le Président. Honorable membre du comité, Excellence, chers collègues, je remercie le gouvernement chinois ainsi que le secrétariat du Centre du patrimoine mondial pour la parfaite organisation de cette 44e session. Je tiens à vous assurer que les limites du mausolée et le contour de la zone tampon sont restés les mêmes qu'ils étaient au moment où ce monument a été inscrit sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. Quant au centre spirituel et culturel, comme ça a été dit, il est situé hors de la zone tampon. Il a été développé conformément aux exigences de la Convention et de ses orientations opérationnelles. Selon les experts internationaux qui ont réalisé l'étude d'impact sur le patrimoine, les projets en cours n'ont aucun impact visuel négatif sur le site du patrimoine mondial. Tous les projets situés dans les vastes abords du site du patrimoine mondial sont conformes à leur hauteur autorisée et respectent l'intégrité visuelle du mausolée, qui est basée sur des preuves historiques. Je tiens à confirmer que le gouvernement kazakhstanais s'engage à soutenir la valeur universelle exceptionnelle du monument architectural et appliquera tous ses efforts dans ce sens. Monsieur le Président, Chers collègues et amis, je vous remercie de votre attention et exprime notre profonde gratitude aux honorables membres du comité pour le soutien apporté au projet d'amendement introduit par la République kirghize au projet de la décision du comité du patrimoine mondial. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, dear colleagues, for the next property to be discussed, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Jingfeng and ECOMOS to present the next report on the state of conservation of the cultural properties located in the Asia Pacific region and opened for discussion. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, uh, details the, the, the site in front of us is the Kanmandu Valley in Nepal. Details of the conservation issues identified for this World Heritage property are summarized in working document uh, 44.7b ad on pages 25 to 32 of the English version and the same page numbers of the French language version. It is important to recall that the committee reviewed the state of conservation of the property since 2015 successively Due to the extensive damage, damages caused by the April-May 2015 earthquakes, there is both a certain and potential danger to the property. So far, there have been three joint World Heritage Center, ECOMOS, ECROM, reactor monitoring missions to the property in October 2015, March 2017, and October 2019 confirming the many conservation issues faced by the property and the government of Nepal's insufficient capacities and the resources to face the magnitude of the conservation and the restoration works required in the aftermath of the earthquakes. The 2017 and 2019 missions all recommended that the property meets the conditions for inscription on the list of World Heritage in danger, and hence identified the desired state of conservation for the removal of the property from list of World Heritage in danger, the DSOC. In consultation with the state party, along with corrective measures, these are also included in the working documents for the present session. However, in order for these to be implemented and monitored by the committee, the property needs to be inscribed on the list of World Heritage in danger. It is also important to recall that in decision 43.7B70, the committee decided to review the updated report on the state of conservation of the property and with a view 
to con considering in the absence of significant progress in the implementation of the recommendations uh, to the inscription of the property on the list of World Heritage in danger at the current session. The committee also underlined the state parties' cooperation in con conducting the requested reactor monitoring mission, which would be a key consideration for the committee at its present session. This mission took place in October 2019 and recommended to put the property on the list of World Heritage in danger. The World Heritage Center and the government of Nepal have engaged in regular dialogue about the state of conservation of the property since 2015, including via our UNESCO office in Kathmandu, where the state party would be willing to receive assistance from the international community and has benefited from significant amount of additional extra budgetary funding and foreign aid since the earthquake, it does not have the capacity to coordinate and ensure the quality of the works carried out, but considers that an inscription on the danger list would be detrimental to the country's image. A dialogue meeting between the director of the World Heritage Center and the, and the ambassador of Nepal on the subject of danger listing took place on the 8th of June 2021 before the publica publication of the working document. After publishing of the working document, the state party has been still submitting huge volume of additional information as of 13 July and stressed the impact of global COVID-19 pandemic on the progress to be made and the pressure that and the stress that expressed that the government is dedicated to its commitment for the protection of the property. However, it is important to recall that in line with committee decision 35 com 12 b which the committee requested the state party to consider refrain from providing additional information regarding state of conservation issues after the guidelines indicated in the operational guidelines, as this information is not able to be evaluated by the advisory bodies, end of quote. In view of the ascertained threats identified since 2015 and confirmed by the successive reactor monitoring missions of 2015, 2019, and 2017 and 2019, the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies, ECOMOS and ECROM, recommend again that the World Heritage Committee inscribe Kanmandu Valley on the list of World Heritage in danger. With your permission, Mr. Chairperson, ECOMOS will now provide comments on this property on behalf of the advisory body. Thank you. Yes, ECOMOS, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. And uh, as my colleague has indicated, these comments are made jointly on behalf of ICOMOS and ICROM. The State Party has endeavoured to address issues raised by previous missions, but is yet to comply fully with committee decisions and recommendations from three reactive monitoring missions in 2015, again in 2017, again in 2019. The 2015 Recovery ma Master Plan does not provide specific guidance on the recovery of each of the seven individual monument zones, which have very different attributes. So while it is welcome that it will be reviewed, it's important that that review is regarded as urgent and is expedited. The State Party has submitted detailed information about completed works, including a photo inventory on progress with 103 earthquake damaged monuments but there are many remaining threats to the property. These include ongoing deterioration of structures that have yet to be repaired, lack of attention to some of the ancient settlements, loss of traditional housing, the introduction of new materials and the reconstruction of some buildings based on conjecture in instead of sufficient supporting evidence, unsympathetic new developments around the monument zones, 
uncontrolled development within monument and buffer zones, impacts of new urban infrastructure, disaster risk management planning not yet completed, and proposed roads. These issues continue to threaten the property's integrity, authenticity, and other attributes of its outstanding universal value. At the 43rd session of the committee, after much discussion, a decision to inscribe the property on the list of World Heritage in Danger was not made to allow one more year, but two years have now passed. The subsequent 2019 reactive monitoring mission jointly undertaken by the World Heritage Centre and both advisory bodies, ICOMOS and ICROM, confirmed that the recovery process remains inadequate to deal with the challenges that have arisen following the 2015 earthquake and that the OUV of the property is subject to ascertained and potential danger. The 2017 and 2019 missions both found that the property meets the conditions for inscription on the list of World Heritage in Danger and they helpfully identify a suggested desired state of conservation which is included in the report before the committee. The World Heritage Centre and both advisory bodies recommend that in accordance with paragraph 179 of the operational guidelines, the committee should inscribe the property on the list of World Heritage in Danger. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for this presentation. Uh, I'd like to know whether there are any comments Nigeria, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I listened with uh, rather attention when the Secretariat was making their submission and also uh, the comment made by the last speaker. And as submitted by the Secretariat, it's obvious that everyone is facing challenges, particularly by the issue of COVID-19. And so Nigeria will want, would like to request and support that additional time be given to Nepal to complete the remaining conservation, restoration, and rehabilitation work of the site before inscribing them on the endangered list. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Baharim Place, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. We know the positive steps taken by the state party and their undeniable commitment to protecting the site and further commend the response, the response following the devastating earthquake and its consequences. I would like to start my intervention by reminding all the distinguished committee members of previous committee discussions on this property, as we believe it is important to trace those discussions and build upon them as we move forward with our deliberations today. This property was proposed for danger listings five years ago at the 39th session though the committee decided to give the state party one more year to address the concerns of ICOMOS as the OUV continues to be compromised. The same scenario repeated itself in the 40th, 41st, 42nd sessions of the committee. When a World Heritage property is proposed for a danger listing by the World Heritage Center and ICOMOS under item 7B for five consecutive committee sessions, the committee should be alarmed that the conservation measures put in place are not in conformity with the standards outlined by this convention. As the economists have stated year after year, while some progress is made in certain parts of the property, the property is comprised of seven monument zones, all of which require the same level of attention and action to address conservation challenges, as well as the need of the state party to respond to the World Heritage Center concern existing threats, such as the expansion of the ring roads, which could potentially impact the Swayam Banoth temple complex. Mr. Chair, during the 43rd session of the committee, the committee did not reach a, an agreement to list the site in danger despite the clear technical evaluation by ECOMOS. I recall the words of the chair of that session, and I quote, this must be done for the last year. This is the last chance, end quote. And the committee agreed to allow the state party one final year to address the conservation concerns raised by ECOMOS as a compromise position to bridge opposing views expressed by committee members. The likely scenario this year is that another postponement will be granted to the state party before a danger listing, as the OUV continues to deteriorate. But we would like to emphasize here 
is that the magnitude of the intervention required to restore the original OUV is immense and requires consorted efforts by the different stakeholders working within the site. One that might exceed the available financial and technical resources of the state party to apply all the recommendations of the Commons within a short time frame. We should not rush the state party in applying the corrective measures, but request that they are applied in the appropriate manner. The mechanisms offered by a danger listing provides that framework. Again, any danger listing is not a negative appraisal. Rather, it is a way in which to aid the state party in gaining recognition of the site's importance, as well as garner further financial resources and technical support. Mr. Chair, we align ourselves with the consensus that, that will be reached by this committee and reiterate our unconventional support to the state party in overcoming these conservation challenges. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Now, Australia, please. Uh, thank you for giving us the, chair, the floor, Chair. Australia would like to recognise the commitment of the State Party of Nepal in addressing the enormous and complex conservation and reconstruction challenges for Kathmandu that have resulted from the 2015 earthquake. We also acknowledge the detailed comprehensive report from the advisory bodies and we value their work in bringing to the committee a clear and concise summary of the current situation in Kathmandu and outlining the many diverse and ongoing issues that remain to be addressed. Many of these issues have been raised in previous reactive monitoring mission reports that have indicated that the dangers to the properties have, property have met the conditions set out in paragraph 179A for inclusion of the property on the list of World Heritage in Danger. A picture emerges from the current report that while there's been substantial progress and have noticed the completion of the repair of earthquake damaged monuments within seven monument zones, there's still a pressing need for a more prioritised and strategic approach in order to address the many interrelated issues of recovery and reconstruction. We appreciate the scale of the conservation efforts required to maintain the OUV of the property and consider that this is made more complex by the urban environment in which these attributes are located. We also note the challenges of recent times, notably the COVID epidemic, and encourage the state party to work with international community to support their efforts. In this regard, we are pleased to see that the state party has worked with the 2017 and 2019 missions to draft a desired state of conservation and corrective measures for the property, and feel this will greatly assist the state party in addressing the many conservation issues it faces. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your comment. Brazil, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is not the first time that the state of conservation of this site is brought to the attention of this committee with a recommendation that had been included on the list of world heritage in danger. And this is not the first time that Brazil supports the opposing view. We are doing it again this time because we believe it's not danger listing that is required at this point but assistance and collaboration from the international community. The, the damages that have been caused to the site have not been the result of negligence on the, state, on the part of the state party, but a devastating earthquake in 2015. And the government of Nepal has not been sitting idle since then. On the contrary, as far as we, we, we were informed and as, as far as we read in the reports, it's working steadily on the recovery of the site and, and uh, through the, uh, uh, the rehabilitation of damaged monuments and a recovery plan has been adopted in coordination with uh, the UNESCO office in Kathmandu. We can clearly acknowledge the progress that has been achieved. We understand that inscribing a country on the danger list is not a punitive measure, but an instrument devised by the convention to assist the recovery process. Yet, we cannot refrain from recognizing that, in this case, danger listing would have a negative impact on the state party's capacity to maintain the site, as Nepal is a developing country that depends on international tourism, also severely diminished by the COVID-19 pandemic, for an important part of its revenue. We thus support the Thai amendment to this draft decision and ask the committee not to inscribe Kathmandu Valley on the list of world heritage in danger. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Thailand, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The 2015 earthquake indeed 
had devastating impact on Nepal's unique cultural heritage. However, the State Party of Nepal has devoted tremendous resources to, to the recovery of the property and has been working closely with UNESCO and the advisory body on the protection of the property's OUV. We therefore believe that the committee has to take into consideration the continued efforts and the considerable amount of work made by the Nepal towards the recovery of the property, particularly the post-earthquake conservation, renovation, rehabilitation of Kathmandu Valley in a time-bound, planned, and coordinated manner. We have to acknowledge also that the conservation work are time-consuming and require special construction materials, as well as highly skilled workers with special expertise in conserving ancient properties. Upon studying the report prepared by ECOMOS and the materials chaired by Nepal, it's obvious that the overall progress made on the conservation work is quite impressive and deserve to be well recognized. Out of the 170 damaged monuments, rehabilitation of 116 monuments have already been completed. 10 monuments are expected to be completed soon and rehabilitation of seven protected monument zones are ongoing. The conservation and rehabilitation work of 34 monuments have already been completed after the 43rd session of the World Heritage Committee. We therefore are of the view that under the prevailing exceptional circumstances, Nepal should be granted additional time to further their efforts in working with UNESCO and its partner for the completion of the remaining post-earthquake conservation renovation and rehabilitation work of the project. To support international efforts on the preservation of the World Heritage property, Thailand on our part has also made a financial contribution to support Nepal's recovery work. In view of these facts and to ensure adequate international support for effective recovery of this World Heritage property, Thailand proposes that the Kathmandu Valley should not be included in the list of World Heritage in danger as appear in the proposed amendment. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Now, Russia, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> After having analyzed the situation with World Heritage properties at Kantapandu Valley, of Nepal, uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, it would be premature to put this property on the list of the world heritage in danger. Uh, as we all know, the present situation, uh, which of course it's uh, rather serious, uh, is the result of a devastating earthquake of 2000 uh, 15 in Nepal, which made a great damage to the cultural heritage sites. It is also well known uh, that after the uh, earthquake, three UNESCO missions uh, have visited Nepal. During the previous session, the committee refrained from putting the property on the danger list. The reason for that was a strong commitment of the government of Nepal. Uh, for the conservation, renovation, and rehabilitation of the property. It should also be stressed that the government of Nepal has made a significant progress in the conservation of the properties, even during the adverse situation uh, caused by COVID pandemic. This progress has also been acknowledged uh, by the last joint reactive monitoring mission. Therefore, our delegation strongly believes that this effort of Nepal should be encouraged by our committee. Nepal should be granted additional time in order to complete the remaining conservation and rehabilitation of the property. Our delegation called upon to support submitted amendments to the draft decision. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Norway, please. 
you have the floor. No way, please. Okay. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair, for giving Norway the floor. It is, in fact, the third time uh, Norway is making an intervention on this matter as a committee member, and it is the sixth time the World Heritage Committee is recommended to discuss and possibly decide the inscription of this property on the list of World Heritage in danger. Norway fully recognizes and commends the considerable efforts and results achieved by the government of Nepal, and we welcome the establishment of the International Scientific Committee. Yet, we wish to express our concerns for issues which are not addressed and which continue to affect adversely the property's state of conservation. We note with deep concern the issues described in the Reactive Monitoring Mission Report related to reconstruction of urban housing and ancient settlements, ongoing loss of values, related to structures which are yet to be restored, new developments in and around monument zones, new urban infrastructure, and the lack of overall master planning. We strongly believe in the use of heritage impact assessments as a crucial tool for planning of new developments in a sustainable way which respects and protects the world heritage values. We believe it is possible to strike a sustainable balance between conservation and development, guided through the use of heritage impact assessment as a prerequisite to new developments as per paragraph 118 base of the operational guidelines. Developments done right can achieve goals of both development and heritage. We consider that the dangers to the property continue to meet the conditions set out in paragraph 179A for inclusion of the property on the list of world heritage in danger. The matter was discussed extensively in our 33rd session and the state party was then given another year. Two years later, we recognized the significant efforts and results achieved we still see confirmed in the reactive monitoring mission report that the required progress is not made yet. The report presents a framework for the desired state of conservation for the removal of the property from the danger list in detail, which in our opinion would assist the state party of Nepal in its continued and committed efforts towards recovery and conservation of this truly outstanding property. The reactive monitoring process and the provisions of the operational guidelines are in place to guide and support us in the shared endeavor and responsibility in protecting our world's heritage. Norway strongly believes that the danger listing as an instrument and tool has positive effects for conservation and recovery through international support and coordination, and we therefore support the draft decision. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Now, China, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. China has been following closely the recovery work of the Katmandu Valley since the 8.1 magnitude earthquake in 2015, which caused a massive loss of lives and damage to this property cherished by us all. It is important to note that the effect of such a devastating earthquake requires a large amount of recovery work and that it needs financial resources, human resources, as well as time. China commands the commitment made by the government of Nepal, relevant to state parties, national and international organizations towards the recovery of this property and welcomes achievement made so far. As a developing country suffered from such a devastating earthquake, Nepal has limited resources but unlimited determination to bring the glory back to this property. However, such determination requires the implementation of recovery work step by step, and many recovery pro projects taking years to be completed. A case in point is the recovery work conducted by China in the nine-story temple, which starts in 20, 2017 and requires 58 months altogether. Therefore, we need to be more patient <clears throat> to see the seeds grow. 
Due to the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide, the recovery work of Kathmandu Valley has been seriously affected because of the reduced tourism income and the lack of human resources. In view of the foregoing, to encourage the state party or disencourage the state party, this is the question in front of us. Therefore, China joins other delegations in supporting not to inscribe Kathmandu Valley on the danger list and allow and encourage the state party to implement the decisions made by the committee and conduct further cooperation with advisory bodies, the secretariat and the international community. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Now, Kyrgyzstan, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As stated by many previous speakers, Nepal has undertaken post earthquake conservation, renovation, and rehabilitation. And uh, Nepal continues collaboration with the UNESCO World Heritage Center, the advisory bodies, and the international community, as it was stated in the presentation by Secretariat. Uh, the overall uh, we would uh, like also acknowledge the overall progress made on the conservation work, and uh, which is encouraging, <clears throat> and which was also uh, acknowledged by the joint uh, monitoring mission, which visited Nepal in October 2019. Uh, in view of the difficulties to carry out the conservation during the COVID-19 pandemic, we support the amendment submitted by Thailand. And uh, we agree that um, we should allocate additional time for the completion of the re remaining conservation and uh, um, we support not inscribing Kathmandu Valley in the list of World Heritage in Danger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Now, Oman, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and our thanks also extended to the Secretariat and the Advisory Body for all the efforts. However, Oman acknowledges all the efforts made by the State Party to address all the issues endorsed in the previous monitoring missions and committee decisions. We are all aware about the scale of destruction caused by the devastating earthquake in 2015 and the commitment showed afterwards by the state party to, rehabil to rehabilitate the property through the recovering master plan RMP, as well as other conservation intervention conducted. We also thank, thank state party for the excellent work to produce detailed photo inventory on conservation works carried on out 103 monuments affected by 2015 earthquake. Mr. Chair, we support the State Party's proposal to establish a new International Scientific Committee as an important step towards fostering the collaboration and coordination between local authorities and the international community. We believe that such step will ensure all facilitate will ensure and facilitate addressing all issues raised by previous documents. However, and due to ongoing circumstances, Oman thinks this, that sufficient time is required to allow the state party to move forward with all its efforts to ensure protection of the outstanding universal value, as well as the proper management of the property. Oman supports the, the amendment draft decision and we request the committee not to list this site on the endangered list. I thank you. Thank you for your comment. Ethiopia, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. My delegation also joins others in uh, supporting the amendments put forward by Thailand and in requesting that the, uh, this site not be put on endangered list. We wish to thank and really appreciate the government of Nepal which despite difficult circumstances, first the earthquake and then COVID, made such strong commitment as manifested in concrete actions 
that uh, it undertook to conserve and rehabilitate the site. Uh, we believe that the commitment to set up the International Scientific Committee is another manifestation of this strong commitment. Therefore, the balance that needs to be struck between heritage conservation and development, this is a test case again. And we believe that it is premature to put this site on the endangered list. We call on experts, UNESCO, to support uh, this developing country in realizing this noble objective. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Saudi Arabia, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dear Chairperson, dear committee members, we would like to first express our condolences and solidarity with countries who suffered human and economic losses due to natural disasters. As for Kathmandu Valley, World Heritage Site, which suffered from a devastating earthquake, we would like to highlight, highlight the following. In line with decisions taken in Baku during the 43rd session of the World Heritage Committee with regard to the sites enlisted in the endangered list, no such enlisting took place if a member state has shown the progress towards safeguarding the outstanding universal value. This calls for the committee's support since such progress has been shown, although Nepal as all countries are suffering from COVID impacts, yet still maintained the commitment and progress shown in the conservation, renovation, and rehabilitation of the property has been clearly outlined by my colleagues, committee members. Dear colleagues, we see globally, even with developed countries where resources are abundant and available, it still takes unpredicted duration to recover from unforeseen disasters. Therefore, we should give our support and encouragement to member states to overcome this challenge, especially in light of impediments COVID has presented, which even hindered convening this meeting we are in today. This support shows our commitment to protect the soul of this convention in preserving and promoting outstanding universal value. Mr. Chair, dear committee members, we join other, other committee members in supporting the amendment proposed by Thailand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. And now, Egypt, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. And also, like uh, previous, uh, previous interventions, we do believe that it would be uh, premature and wrong to, to inscribe this site on the uh, endangered list. Uh, Nepal is exerting a lot of efforts uh, in preserving the site, including uh, the establishment of the scientific committee and uh, the rehabilitation master plan. We commend this effort and we believe that it should be taken into account when we adopt the decision. Uh, Chair, today, if you are meeting online, it's because we are unable due to the sanitary situation to meet in presentia and because there is, uh, there is uh, COVID and it's a pandemic and this pandemic has a lot of consequences, not only loss of life, unfortunately, but also disruption of, uh, of plans, new priorities set on countries. And we do believe that it would be uh, uh, inconsistent that this committee, while meeting uh, online because of COVID, takes a, a decision uh, uh, of, uh, of inserting this site on the endangered list, despite all the efforts that were uh, undertaken by Nepal, and ignoring totally, totally ignoring all the challenges also that Nepal uh, is facing and that uh, I think should have been mentioned more uh, in the documents uh, when we are uh, examining uh, not only this site but also other sites. So, uh, in short, I would like also to support uh, the amendments presented by Thailand. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Now, South Africa, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, for, for giving me the floor again. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving me the floor again. As we all know, the Kathmandu Valley suffered significant damages in 2015 following the outbreak of the earthquake. It has been reported that following this natural disaster, 170 monuments were damaged, and to date, 116 of have been restored. We commend the state party for their commendable efforts towards restoring the site to its original condition. Given the significant damage incurred, 
it will take time and effort to completely restore the property. We thank the support of the international partners. We thank the international partners for the support extended to Nepal and wish to call for more international assistance. Tourism is the largest industry in Nepal and inscribing this site in the list of World Heritage in danger will be a setback for the economy. In this regard, I join many delegations in supporting the proposal amendments by Thailand. I thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, now I give the floor to Thailand. Mr. Chairman, um, we request for the floor again in order to seek your permission to give the opportunity for Nepal to provide additional information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous soutenons l'amendement concernant Népal. Donner du temps à Népal. On voit de nos jours ce qui se passe et je profite de cette occasion comme mes certains de mes précédents et comme nous tous, je pense, d'exprimer mes sentiments envers les pays qui ont vécu et qui sont toujours sur la pression des éléments où on voit que ce qui se passe est difficile à réparer. Parfois, j'avais la chance de visiter Népal avant le tremblement de terre. J'ai vu l'attachement des citoyens de ce pays à leur patrimoine. J'ai vu et nous avons tous pu voir les efforts qu'ils ont que le gouvernement a essayé à faire et a fait. Et je pense qu'il est très, très difficile, qu'il est très, très difficile de faire des miracles. Nos collègues ont déjà dit, et les experts le, le savent beaucoup mieux, le temps qu'il faut pour renouveler, pour reconstruire un édifice. Et ce qui s'est passé au Népal en 2015, c'était vraiment une catastrophe dont on ne se remet pas facilement. Et je finis avec la belle phrase que je viens d'entendre. La pandémie nous oblige de nous réunir même à distance ou à distance. Merci bien. Thank you for your comment. I note uh, that uh, the, the request of Thailand to give, give floor to the state party concerned for the response. Uh, if you don't mind, I will invite uh, the state party to speak after committee members to answer questions. I'd like to ask you to clearly formulate the question for the state party. Thank you. Now, Hungary, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hungary welcomes the steps taken by Nepal to conserve the Kathmandu Valley World Heritage Site, in particular its efforts to rehabilitate 116 damaged monuments with special attention to the appropriate use of materials and the use of skilled labor. It is highly appreciated also that the state party is ready to provide documentation of the conservation work implement the recommendations made in the past and also ready to establish an international scientific committee to facilitate collabor collaboration as well as to welcome reactive monitoring missions in the future. It uh, should not be overlooked that the approval and the implementation of the guidelines for the reconstruction, rehabilitation and conservation of earthquake affected monuments and the approval and the implementation of the post earthquake conservation manual is completed. Nepal has made substantial efforts to comply with the observations and suggestions of the committee and the advisory bodies. Hungary believes that the state party deserves more time to continue its work. For these reasons, Hungary supports the, the amendment of the draft decision suggested by Thailand. Thank you. 
Thank you for your comment. Australia, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving us the floor for the second time on this property. We'd just like to say that Australia will support the growing consensus of the committee not to include Kathmandu on the IDL. However, we urge the state party to adopt and action the corrective measures that have been developed with the advisory bodies to provide a framework to focus future actions and priorities for the recovery of the property, to monitor progress towards achieving this end, and in particular, to focus the attention of the international donors. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Thailand, have you formulated the question? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'd like to, the first question is um, that uh, as the, you know, in view of the challenges faced by Nepal, how do, do they intend within uh, to carry forward the, the renovation and rehabilitation work under the, the constraints that uh, they face, particularly in, in terms of the time frame. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nepal, please, you have the floor for a concise clarification. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to congratulate you, first of all, for your appointment as chairman of this session. I would also like to appreciate the government of China, the World Heritage Center, and the Secretariat for the excellent organization of the session. The delegation of Nepal would like to express its deepest condolences and the sympathies to the government and the people of China for the loss of lives and the disruption caused by the recent flood in Hainan province. Nepal has undertaken post earthquake conservation, renovation, and rehabilitation work of Kathmandu Valley World Heritage property in a time bound, planned, and coordinated manner, as esteemed delegation of Thailand already highlighted. Our six member uh, recovery plan has already been adopted. Uh, conservation works are, as we all know, are time consuming, requiring special construction materials and workers are very skilled that are not abundantly available in the market as we find, find local, uh, I mean, other modern labors. The overall progress made on the conservation work is encouraging. Out of 170 monument, monuments damaged, rehabilitation of 160 monuments have already been completed despite the lockdown and the curfew orders due to COVID-19. Nepal is committed to preserve the outstanding universal value of the properties and will not conduct any activities that undermine the OUB. Nepal is also ready to continue collaboration and cooperation with the World Heritage Center, the advisory body and the international community, ready to implement the past recommendations. We are also ready to welcome the joint verification mission again, and ready to establish an international scientific committee to monitor the progress. Recently, Nepal uh, has submitted new documents of, uh, to World Heritage Committee for its evaluations. Those documents include Kathmandu Valley Integrated Management Frameworks, Pasupati Master Plan 2021, Master Plan of Hanuman Doka Palace Museum, and final draft of Heritage Impact Assessment, which is expected to be approved very soon. Since substantial progress has already been made, we are hopeful that the remaining tax will be completed uh, by the end of 2022. Verification mission has not been able to visit Nepal after October 2019. The 2019 mission all noted a lot of progress. A fresh report would therefore help to evaluate the real status of the work done. Hence, we sincerely request the esteemed committee members, as I have, uh, I heard that uh, there, uh, there is a support from the many esteemed uh, committee members, not to inscribe uh, the property in the list of all heritage. Uh, in danger. So I request uh, the esteem, uh, 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 the committee members, and then also understand uh, the advisory bodies, our uh, situations, and understand our commitments. Therefore, we like to request again not to inscribe this property in the list of all heritage in danger and give us 
some more time to complete the remaining tasks. Thank you very much. Thank you for the clarification. And now I give the floor to Ecomos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And again, this intervention is made on behalf of both cultural advisory bodies, ICOMOS and ICROM. I would like to thank the distinguished delegates for their comments and contributions, and would like to highlight that at no stage are the advisory bodies questioning the commitments and efforts of the State Party of Nepal. But there is an issue at this property, given the circumstances since the major earthquake in 2015 of capacity and achievement. When this matter first came before the committee uh, back in 2015, the primary danger to the outstanding universal value of the property related to the earthquake damage. It is unfortunately the case that there are further threats now which arise from some of the inappropriate work that has been undertaken as outlined in the 2017 and 2019 mission reports. Um, and there has been further damage. Uh, the image that's on the screen to committee members, um, the right-hand image of the left screen, for example, shows further collapse of buildings that have happened as the committee has progressively across five different sessions indicated that there should be additional time, additional time and one more chance. Uh, chair and committee members, um, it is important to encourage the state party, but ICOMOS and ICROM would like to clarify that that needs to be the right kind of encouragement. Uh, that is why there have already been three missions and our exhortation is that uh, the advice provided in those missions um, be taken. Uh, this is a question as to whether or not the committee would be prepared to use the tools at its disposal in order to use the framework of in danger listing and the desired state of conservation process and the corrective measures to support the state party in addressing the profound threats that continue to affect the property. That uh, chair and delegates would be the soul of the convention that was referred to by the distinguished delegate from Saudi Arabia. Uh, Chair and delegates, um, ICOMOS and ICROM are obviously cognizant of the common comments that have been expressed by the delegation. We are so with some sadness because there is an implicit un, uh, message there that in danger listing is bad rather than supportive. But that being the case, we would also advise that some of the other changes in the amendment do not reflect the comments that have been made by the delegations nor the content of the 2017 and 2019 reactive monitoring mission reports. Uh, for example, there have been a number of delegates that have supported the International Scientific Committee and yet the proposed amendment to paragraph five would delete that reference. Uh, there is a strong need for proper heritage impact assessment processes in accordance with the ICOMOS guidance and yet the changes that are proposed to paragraph nine would water down that commitment. Uh, Chair and delegates, we would advise that even if, um, given the position of the honourable delegates, the um, advice from the advisory bodies about in danger listing is not taken, that the other changes to the uh, draft uh, decision that are proposed in the amendment are simply not appropriate and not in, not in the best interests of the property and its outstanding universal value. And we would urge you to use the mechanisms of the convention and the operational guidelines to support the conservation of this extraordinary but highly challenged property. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your comment. Now, uh, I'd, give, uh, I'd like to give the floor to Jing Feng. You have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, very briefly, I think for the committee to take a scientific and objective consideration of all the information available, uh, I just have a piece of clarification regarding uh, paragraph 5, the current paragraph 5 of the uh, amend, uh, amended draft decision. 
which is the second part that relates to the appreciation on the process of formulation of the new master plan for Pashpati uh, protected monument zone. Uh, the, there is a sort of discrepancy on the information available to the center. Uh, by 3rd of August 2020, the state party said there is a draft for review by the advisory bodies in the process of preparing the state of conservation working document. On the 3rd of March 2021, the state party in its state, uh, SOC, uh, state of conservation report saying that the master plan for Pashpati uh, protected monument zone, monument zone has been withdrawn. Now, by 13 of July, as the distinguished ambassador was saying, the uh, uh, additional information on the, uh, master, the new master plan for Pashpati has also arrived. But uh, as I ended earlier, this information, uh, the, uh, neither the, uh, the World Health Center nor the advisory bodies were able to evaluate this. So for, in the best interest of this, I think this paragraph may be, uh, I think, uh, for further consideration by the committee members. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, I see no more questions and uh, comments. So I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 44 come 7 b dot 33 concerning this property. But before doing so, I'd like to ask the rapporteur if she has received any amendments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We received an amendment from the distinguished delegation of Thailand. It is already integrated on the screen. If you wish so, Mr. Chair, we can go paragraph by paragraph. Yes, please. We have no amendments proposed for the first two paragraphs. Uh, dear colleagues, we pass through the text paragraph by paragraph. So for the first two paragraphs approved, Guatemala, please, you have the floor. Buenos días, gracias, señor presidente. Pues Guatemala también desea expresarse y pues nos sumamos al al consenso que ya se expresó por la mayoría de los miembros del comité en respecto a comprender más tiempo al estado parte para la recuperación de su sitio. Mi país pues reconoce los esfuerzos que ya se han mostrado, ¿verdad? Damos nuestro voto de, de confianza a lo que han expresado los, esta, eh, los órganos consultivos en el sentido de trabajar conjuntamente en el proceso de la reconstrucción y de no vulnerar la autenticidad y no comprometer esa integridad que pues desde ya se ve un poco alterada por los daños de ese terremoto. Y bueno, pues eh, estamos muy de acuerdo que este debe ser un proceso largo y se debe tomar con responsabilidad y no a la ligera. Entonces, eh, pues estamos de acuerdo en que se le pueda dar un poco más tiempo para que el Estado parte pueda responder. Gracias. Thank you for your comment. Now, I wanted to reiterate for paragraph one, paragraph two, approved. Approved. Go ahead. We have new paragraph proposed for paragraph three, noting that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the current extended 44th session of the World Heritage Committee takes place online. Uh, I give the floor to Dr. Rosler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a clarification from the Secretariat. Now, do you wish, and this is maybe a question to Thailand, do you wish to make a reference to the COVID-19 pandemic and the impacts it had on uh, the situation uh, of uh, Kathmandu Valley in Nepal, or do you wish to make a reference to the online session, which I don't believe you wish to do? <laughs> maybe, I hope I have been clear. So please look at this paragraph. Thank you. Uh, Bahaluen, please, you have the floor. Yes, Mr. Chair, just to follow up on that, we had the same understanding and we were suggesting to delete this paragraph because we thought it referred to that the meeting is held online, which is obvious. So we were suggesting to delete it. 
Thank you. Norway, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Our question was related to exactly the same paragraph. Um, so we will follow Bahrain on this one. Thank you. Thank you. China, please. You have the floor. Mr. Chairperson, China would like to echo the previous speakers uh, that we do not need to emphasize on this matter. Thank you. Dear colleagues, any objection? Australia. Oh, Australia, please, you have the floor. Brian, we would just like to support that the paragraph three is deleted. We're not sure that it's relevant in the context of the decision. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any objections? for deletion of this paragraph three. Oh, approve, approved deletion. Go ahead. In this case, um, we have the original paragraph three without any amendments, Mr. Chair. Approved. Approved. Go ahead. Paragraph four reads, appreciates the state parties. Um, before reading, Mr. Chair, we had to make some uh, adjustments and we will need some clarifications in this paragraph because uh, since the verb changed, urges to appreciate, the text didn't fit. So I would like uh, okay. this thing, okay. yeah. um, <laughs> appreciates yeah the state party's commitment to expedite the revision of the integrated management framework, IMF in brackets, and updating it, I presume, as per the requirements according to the context of, of sites and national legislative provisions, also appreciates the process of formulation of the new master plan for Pashupati protected monument zone and prepared HIA procedures, which are in the process of government appro approval. Approved. Norway, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, taking into account the information that was provided by the World Heritage Center immediately before we started to go paragraph by paragraph, it would be useful with a clarification because I have to admit we are a little bit confused as to what we are taking out and what we are taking in. Uh, so please, we need a little bit of clarification, I think, from, from the advisory body, ICOMOS, and from the Secretariat uh, as to the consequences of, of this uh, new uh, text that is being proposed. Thank you, Chair. Now I give the floor to Ecomos for clarification. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Um, as I uh, mentioned in the uh, preceding intervention, uh, the advisory bodies uh, note the consensus amongst the committee with respect to the listing of the property on the uh, list of World Heritage in Danger, but did not actually hear uh, grave concerns about the process that had been outlined in other sections of the draft decision. Uh, it is certainly the view of ICOMOS that the uh, recovery uh, master plan uh, and six year plan and timetable do need revision in accordance with the advice that has been provided through the reactive monitoring mission process. And we would uh, suggest with respect to the honorable delegates and the state party that the reference that has been made to HIA procedures in this paragraph, uh, amended paragraph, is actually uh, not adequate nor appropriate to the significance of the property. And we would strongly commend to the committee's decision the original words relating to uh, proper preparation of heritage impact assessments in accordance with the guidance uh, prepared by ECOMOS in 2011, which is the usual a committee approach and should apply to this property in these circumstances. Thank you. Thank you for your clarification. Uh, dear colleagues, can we accept this paragraph or other comment? Mm -hmm. 
Norway, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Having heard the clarification from ECOMOS, we would like to retain, please, uh, the reference to the recovery master plan, including revisions to the six year plan and timetable, and also then the appropriate uh, wording related to heritage impact assessments. Thank you, Chair. Guatemala, please. Gracias, Presidente. Eh, en, eh, en, en, en línea con eh, seguir eh, reconociendo el análisis de los órganos evaluadores y de los análisis y los datos científicos, eh, apoyamos la, la solicitud de Noruega de mantener este párrafo, haciendo referencia a el plan, a los seis años, al plan de seis años y la agenda eh, que el Estado parte integre para que eh, de, 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 de nuevo le dé eh, fuerza al plan de recuperación de Nepal, que en, en, en conjunto eso es lo que queremos. Gracias, presidente. Thank you. Any other comments? Any objections to the new wording? So approve or e-commerce, e-commerce, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I, I would just like to assist the rapporteur in that, yes, what's, what's currently on the screen is not what I understand the committee has agreed, which is to include the words, including revisions to the six year plan and timetable. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any objections to this paragraph? Uh, you see, uh, uh, Mr. Rapporteur, can you read this paragraph again? <laughs> of course, Mr. Chair. Paragraph 4 reads, appreciates the state party's commitment to expedite the revision of the integrated management framework, IMF, and updating it as per the requirements according to the context of sites, and national legislative provisions, also appreciates the process of formulation of the new master plan for Pashupati protected monument zone and prepared HIA procedures, which are in the process of government approval of the recovery master plan, including revisions to the six year plan and timetable. Dear colleagues, Approved. Yes, approved. Go ahead. Original paragraph five is proposed for deletion, Mr. Chair. And new paragraph five reads, requests the state party to implement fully what was already declared in the six year plan and complete its all rehabilitation works within 2022 and to report to the World Heritage Committee. Uh, Bahrain, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We would suggest that the paragraph, uh, original paragraph five concerning the International Scientific Committee is retained unless the clarification is given from the distinguished delegate of Thailand as the reasoning of the deletion of the reference to the scientific committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comment. Now, Australia, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. We would support Bahrain's uh, suggestion then to retain that paragraph. We think that it would assist in bringing together and coordinating expertise and knowledge to assist in the recovery. And I think we've had a very good example of that already tonight in the Kyrgyzstan property. I'm sorry, in the Kazakhstan property. Thank you. Thank you. Norway, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Norway would echo the two previous speakers. Thank you. Thank you. E-commerce, please, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Chair. ICOMOS would uh, highlight that this committee is also a good example of um, the way that the advice from the advisory bodies can be help, helpfully harnessed to the advantage of the state party and the property. And this is why collaborating about the terms of reference and membership of the committee is an appropriate action. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Highlander, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think this paragraph was formally uh, re amended because our understanding is that the previous formulation was based on the assumption that the this world heritage would be inscribed and placed on the endangered list and uh, and also the establishment establishment of the international scientific committee is already something that the nepal is ready to undertake on its own thank you okay uh other comments? Any, ob any objection to retain the original paragraph five? No objection. Approved. Approved. Go ahead. In this case, new paragraph six will read, requests the state party to implement fully what was already declared in the six year plan and complete its all rehabilitation works within 2022 and to report to the World Heritage Committee. Approved. Approved. Go ahead. New paragraph seven reads, noting the conclusions and recommendations of the 2019 Joint World Heritage Center, ICOMOS, ICROM Reactive Monitoring Mission, expresses concern at the mission's findings regarding the adverse effect on the authenticity of the property and the focus on monuments at the expense of other attributes with resulting ramifications for traditional urban housing and ancient settlements, and therefore further requests the state party to fully implement the mission recommendations, in particular, A, the establishment of a recovery master plan for each protective monument zone of the property, and B, the immediate cessation of proposed changes to the Lal Baithak wing of the National Art Museum, Bhaktapur pending the submission of further documentation and the Doro technical review by ICOMOS to consider the potential impacts of the proposed project on the OUV of the property. Approved. Approved. Go ahead. There are no changes proposed to the original paragraph seven and eight, new paragraph eight and nine, Mr. Chair. Approved. Approved. Go ahead. Original paragraph nine is proposed for deletion. Shall we continue? I'd continue, yeah. And new Baharin, uh, Baharin, oh, sorry, Baharin, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just to follow up on some of the discussions we had earlier, we believe that the reference to the heritage impact assessments would be necessary. And I don't think that's something specific to the site. Uh, heritage impact assessments has been clearly outlined in the operational guidelines. Uh, we just hope that this decision uh, reaffirms state parties in general's commitment to, to applying heritage impact assessment whenever uh, projects are implemented within the within the property. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. No, we, please. No, we, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. With specific reference to paragraph 118 base of the operational guidelines, we support what was just previously expressed by uh, the distinguished colleague of Bahrain. Thank you. Thank you for your comment.
Uh, dear colleagues, shall we keep this paragraph? Any objections? Ikomos, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I was simply going to highlight that doing what you have, uh, exactly what you have just proposed, would be quite consistent with the DSOCR framework that was included in the report before the committee. Again, again, recognising the consensus is not to proceed with listing in danger. So I think this would be helpful to that uh, productive collaboration between the advisory bodies and the state party. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, approved to keep this paragraph approved no objection approved go ahead in this case the next paragraph will be our new paragraph 11 <laughs> and we have no changes uh, to this Paragraph, Mr. Chair. Okay, approved. Approved. Go ahead. Original decisions, paragraphs 11, 12, and 13 are proposed for deletion, Mr. Chair. Approved. Yes, approved. Go ahead. And new paragraph 12 reads, finally requests the state party to submit to the World Heritage Center by 1 February 2022, an updated report on the state of conservation of the property and the implementation of the above for examination by the World Heritage Committee at its 45th session, full stop. Uh, China, please, you have the floor. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, China supports all the revisions, but uh, we have a very minor uh, editing in, in language in, in previous uh, paragraph. So uh, uh, in paragraph four and five. No, we can't go back. Okay, it's a, it's a language, language editing, okay. No, uh, we can't go back. Okay, okay. Mm. For the last one. Uh, Mr. Rapporteur, please, for the... Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, Chair, just to clarify, uh, yes. the language edits will be done when, the, uh, when we prepare the decisions report. That's good. Yeah. So for the last paragraph, approved? No way, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. As we said in our opening intervention, uh, it's the third time that we are discussing this case and, uh, and our position was expressed very clearly, uh, but we do see where the meeting is and this discussion is, is moving uh, and there is building a strong, a strong group of countries which are in favor of, of the uh, amendments proposed on the screen. Uh, but we do wish to note that we have been very consistent in, in our, uh, in our uh, deliberations on, on this and our interventions on this specific matter. Thank you, Chair. Okay. So, uh, approved. For the last paragraph, approved, uh, no, no objection. Okay, approved. Uh, dear colleagues, now we have went through all the text. If there are no other comments, I now declare the draft decision 44-7B.33 adopted as amended. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves 
about this property? Yes, World Heritage Watch, you have the floor for two minutes intervention. Thank you, Chair. May I mention first that it would be very helpful if we could be given the floor before the decisions are adopted uh, in, in the spirit of uh, an in, improved participation of civil society as has been um, decided several times uh, by the committee itself. We would really appreciate to be given the floor before the decisions are adopted. So the statement is, the main reason why restoration work at the Kathmandu Valley World Heritage was hampered after the 2015 earthquake was not the lack of funding, but poor management, poor planning and uncoordinated implementation carried out by the Department of Archaeology, DOA, which is the official authority in dealing with World Heritage issues. The slow recovery process is partly due to the lack of the OAS authority caused by conflicting and overlapping responsibilities with other organizations. There is a boundary conflict between the planned ring road widening and the Swayambu World Heritage Site. Major religious devotional buildings were constructed in Swayambu without requirement government permits and neither were they communicated to the World Heritage Center. A proposed master plan for the development of uh, Pashupani uh, Tat is an example of infraction on major religious site. Big constructions are carried out on the site and no valid environmental or heritage impact studies have been carried out. The Bhaktapur municipality plans to destroy a Rana building of the former royal palace. Restoration work is of poor quality due to the lowest bidder tender system, which favors the employment of less skilled craftspeople. The promised amendment of the procurement and hiring laws has not taken place. Examples are the Anantapur temple at Swayambu where substandard mortar was employed and the Patan museum which remains incompletely restored after six years. Listing the Kathmandu Valley as endangered might have worked as an incentive to increase funding but moreover would have worked to give the government of Nepal the message that it must develop one single competent and empowered agency to look after conservation management. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Uh, we can only give floor to observers after the decision is taken. Thank you for your comments. Uh, dear colleagues, with this, we are now moving to the Africa region. For the next property to be discussed, I'd like to give the floor to the delegation of Mali, which requested the State of Conservation report on the royal palaces of Abame, Benin, to be opened for discussion, to present to the committee the reason why it made such a request. Excellency, you have the floor. Merci, merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, les chefs de délégation, la délégation du Mali voudrait remercier Monsieur le Président de la mise en débat dans le cadre des travaux de la présente session du projet de décision 44 com 7b.1 relatif à l'état de conservation des palais royaux d'Abomé, bien du patrimoine historique béninois inscrit sur la liste du patrimoine mondial depuis 1985 conformément à la requête qu'elle a introduite à cet effet au nom de l'État parti du Bénin qui ne siège pas actuellement au Comité du patrimoine mondial. Pour rappel, ce projet de décision contient d'importantes recommandations concernant deux dimensions, l'une actuelle et l'autre future du bien. Il s'agit d'une part de son état de conservation qui a fait l'objet de plusieurs missions récentes du civil du Comité du patrimoine mondial et de l'e-commerce. E et d'autre part, du pro, de projet du, de création du musée de l'épopée des Amazones et des rois du Dahomey, initié par le gouvernement béninois pour valoriser le site palatial d'Abomé en renforçant l'intégrité et l'interprétation du bien. Sur ces deux aspects, l'État parti du Bénin a jusqu'ici privilégié un dialogue régulier et constant avec le, le, le Centre du patrimoine mondial et les commence en vue de la prise en compte de l'ensemble de leurs recommandations pour la sauvegarde de la valeur universelle 
exceptionnelle du bien. Dans ce cadre, notamment, l'État parti du Bénin a transmis le 27 mai 2021 un mémorandum au Centre du patrimoine mondial pour répondre à certaines préoccupations formulées par l'ICOMOS dans son avis technique de janvier 2021 sur le projet de création du musée de l'épopée des Amazones et des rois du Dahomey et de valorisation du site palatial d'Abomey. D'une manière générale, ce mémorandum apporte des éléments probants sur des améliorations sensibles enregistrées dans l'état de conservation globale du bien, notamment en ce qui concerne la lutte contre l'occupation illégale à l'intérieur du bien, ainsi que les réaménagements introduits dans le plan architectural du futur musée pour réduire son emprise sur le bien et réhabiliter plusieurs de ses composantes, conformément aux recommandations pertinentes de l'ICOMOS. En somme, ce sont ces évolutions positives qui n'ont pas, pas pu être prises en compte lors de l'élaboration du projet de décision, à raison des contraintes de délai que l'État parti du Bénin souhaite voir refléter en suggérant quelques amendements aux dix projets de décision. Ces amendements concernent notamment les points 6, 12, 13, nouveaux et 15, nouveaux anciens points 14. Je voudrais à ce stade vous prier, Monsieur le Président, de bien vouloir inviter l'État parti du Bénin à donner quelques précisions par rapport à ces amendements. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much. Uh... I note your request to give the floor to the state party concerned for response, for clarification. If you don't mind, I will invite the state party to speak after committee members to answer questions. I'd like to ask you to clearly formulate the question for the state party. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, before I invite uh, w, uh, the invite uh, World Heritage Center and the ECMOS to respond to the comment. I suggest we have a five minutes technical break.
dear colleagues, let's proceed. Uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Muhammad, Chief of the Africa Unit of the World Heritage Center and the e-commerce to respond to this comment. You have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, nous pouvons confirmer que l'État parti du Bénin a soumis, le 27 mai 2021, un mémorandum au Centre du département mondial pour répondre à certaines préoccupations formulées par e-commerce dans son avis technique de janvier 2021 sur le projet de création du musée, le, du musée de épopée de Amazon et du roi de Dahomey et la valorisation du site Palais Abomey. Considérant les délais de transmission, le secrétaire et les commences n'ont pas pu intégrer ces dernières informations fournies par l'État parti du Bénin dans le rapport de l'État de conservation de biens qui était déjà finalisé. Cependant, le secrétaire a organisé plusieurs réunions, notamment le 28 juin et le 9 juillet 2021, avec la participation de l'e-commerce et l'État parti, afin de poursuivre le dialogue sur la manière d'améliorer significativement l'état de conservation général du bien, et particulièrement en ce qui concerne le contrôle de l'occupation illégale à l'intérieur du bien, ainsi que la, les actions à entreprendre pour réduire l'empreinte du futur musée sur le bien et la réhabilitation de plusieurs de ses composants. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. E-commerce, please. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, first, ICOMOS appreciates the recent dialogue with the State Party on progress with the museum project. And we are reviewing formally the recent information that's been provided in the memorandum that's already been mentioned. We support the proposed amendments to the draft decision. As being in line with our recent dialogue, in particular, the need for further sustained exchanges of information as the project further develops in order to ensure it supports outstanding universal value and contributes to the overall conservation of the property. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know whether there are any comments. Uganda, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uganda supports the amendments in draft decision 54COM 7B.1 as proposed by my distinguished colleague from Mali. Specifically, the amendments in paragraph 12 and 13 of the draft decision operationalize greater working maturity of the state party, the World Heritage Center, and its advisory bodies in the best way forward for sustainable conservation and management of the policies in question. Mr. Chairman, given the fact that several states parties, including Benin, continue to experience complex, conflictual and unpredictable challenges of COVID-19, the amendment in paragraph 14, simply requesting for an extra two months to finalize and present a state of conservation report on implementation of the recommendations in the draft decision and as well as its examination at the 45th session of the World Heritage Committee in 2022, deserves utmost approval. I rest my case and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your comment. Ethiopia, please, you have the floor. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Nous nous rejoignons donc au Mali, ainsi que mon collègue de, de l'Ouganda, pour soutenir les amendements qui ont été proposés et qui ont été appuyés, vous notez, par les experts de l'ECOMOS, que nous remercions pour leur compréhension face à la complexité de la difficulté dont le pays fait face et à l'esprit de dialogue et de coopération dont il a fait montre. Nous apprécions particulièrement le fait que l'État euh, parti a mis un mémorandum répondant aux préoccupations du ECOMOS du 27 mai que dans ce mémorandum, euh, il est clairement élaboré l'amélioration de la conservation du bien, ainsi que l'aménagement futur du musée, en tenant compte de euh, l'avis exprimé par les experts. Compte tenu de cette évolution 
positif. Nous soutenons tous les amendements soumis et nous nous attendons à ce que nous puissions avancer assez rapidement dans, sur ce sujet. Je vous remercie. Thank you for your comment. Spain, please. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Eh, queremos eh, dar nuestro apoyo también a las enmiendas porque nos encontramos ante un caso que debe ser ejemplar. Tenemos un, un Estado que ha, ha manifestado dentro de sus dificultades los esfuerzos que ha hecho. Está reconocido que mandó un memorándum. El propio órgano evaluador reconoce que está bien y está pidiendo dos elementos que son fundamentales en esta tarea. Más diálogo y, en este caso, menos tiempo, cuando lo habitual es que se pida más tiempo. Por tanto, queremos felicitar al Estado de Benín y dar nuestro respaldo a la enmienda absolutamente. Muchas gracias. Yes. Thank you for your comment. Now, Brazil, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, we've reviewed the ECOMOS report and we have also received information from the state party concerning the state of conservation of the site. We believe the draft decision reflects most of the findings of the report but does not adequately acknowledge efforts and improvements on the part of the local government, such as the legal measures adopted in order to increase protection from illegal developments and encroachments on the pro property, or the, adju the adjustments that have been made to the museum projects in the court of the Amazons. We believe this should be reflected on the draft decision. Thus, we support the amendments that, ha that has been pre presented by the distinguished delegation of Mali. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. China, please, you have the floor. China, you have the floor. Okay. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, China thanks the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies uh, uh, for this uh, very good document. China commends the state party for the efforts it has made in conserving uh, the property. China understands that the structures of the, some uh, palaces in the property are vulnerable and need immediate action. China expresses its uh, appreciation to institutionalized mechanism the state party has established in protecting the property and in and restoring the degraded areas, including a revised management plan for 2020 to 2024 and a new management committee for its execution, and the appointment of a site manager and a conservator for the museum. A fire prevention plan is being formulated also. China is confident that the enhanced communication between the State Party and the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies, a long-term recovery plan will be established to safeguard the OUV of the property and the museum project will be carried out in respect for the OUV of the property. Therefore, China supports the amendment submitted by Mali. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Russia, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a Russian Federation would like to highlight the progress made by the State Party of Benin in improving the state of conservation of the Royal Palaces of Abomey World Heritage Property. Uh, the efforts of the state party are significant in its scale and include the revision of management plan and its implementation as well as conservation works aimed at rehabilitation of the degraded parts of the property. The achievements of Benin is ensuring fire safety at the World Heritage property as well as the introduction of a special program to support traditional knowledge are also valuable in terms of risk preparedness and sustainable development. In this slide, the remaining issues concerning new developments, including the museum project, as well as the development of the recovery plan, are the new challenges that we are sure would be efficiently addressed by the state party in cooperation with the advisory bodies. 
as we understood, the state party has already taken in consideration the observation concerning the museum project made in the draft decision and has transmitted to the World Heritage Center the memorandum uh, about the substantial changes that goes in line with the recommendations such as reducing volume of the construction and other significant adjustment. Therefore, we believe that there is no need to wait longer anymore and further progress by the State Party of Benin should be presented in the 45th session of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Hungary, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Hungary welcomes the steps taken by Benin to conserve the atlases of Abu Mayor Heritage Site. In particular, its efforts to restore the majority of the structures in the palace area. Our country highly appreciates that in order to address the high risk of fire, a fire hydrant has been brought back into service and also welcomes that the fire break of six meters has been reestablished around the buildings and will be kept clear of vegetation. Hungary notes with satisfaction that the state party has revised the management plan for 2020 to 2024, and that in order to operationalize this plan, that the state party integrated comments from World Heritage Center and ECOMOS. Hungary also welcomes the new management committee was established in November 2019. In view of the above, Hungary supports the amendment of the draft decision submitted by Mani. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Oh, man, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to thank the advisory body for the excellent report for this site. I also like that uh, I would like to take this opportunity to commend the state party for its endeavor to preserve the property's outstanding universal value, especially the submission for the revised management plan, as well as the establishment for the new management committee. Oman also, Mr. Chair, I would like to echo the voice of, for, for the other state parties for the positive comments for this, uh, for, the, for these sites. And therefore, we believe that sufficient time is required to allow the state party to comply with all requirements for the advisory body. For this reason, Oman supports the, the amendment for the draft re uh, resolution. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Egypt, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I uh, would like at the outset to commend Benin for the efforts exerted in preserving the site of the Royal Palaces of Abu and thank ECOMOS and the World Heritage Center for their assessments. We equally commend the dialogue process between Benin, ECOMOS, and the World Heritage Center as indicated in the previous interventions. I would like to support the amendments presented by Mali on this draft resolution which would enable the preservation of the site while implementing the museum project. I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your comment. Saudi Arabia, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll try to be brief since my colleagues has covered uh, most of the items here, but we would like to express our appreciation to this exemplary case, where country like Benin shows commitment and real action on the floor. So there is the regulatory framework, which is set in place. There is the planning, which is the planning and the, uh, the, uh, the planning side, which is uh, being met. And there is also the action on the ground with regard to the museum and related uh, buildings in this regard. We see uh, an exemplary case of uh, dialogue between the member state and the uh, ECOMOS, the secretariat, and we commend them all uh, for this constructive dialogue. I think it is an exemplary case and we would like to support the amendment proposed in this regard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. South Africa, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving us the floor. We support the amendment uh, proposed by Mali uh, on behalf of Benin. As you know, the Royal Palaces of Abu May is one of the two World Heritage properties within the State Party of Benin, the other being the natural site of Wali Penjari complex which will also be discussed during this 44th session of the World Heritage Committee. We welcome, effort, we welcome all the efforts undertaken by the State Party of Benin in preserving the outstanding universal value of these palaces 
and their willing and their determination to engage in enhanced dialogue with the World Heritage Center and advisory body in the efforts to build the new museum. With these words, Chairperson, as I said, we support the proposed amendment. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. Norway, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving Norway the floor. Um, we would like to echo our distinguished uh, colleagues in the committee and acknowledge the, the, the great work that has been, been performed by, by Mali. Uh, we could also support the amendment proposed by Mali uh, only with a few changes, uh, and those are concerning uh, paragraph 12. Uh, so my question to you, Chair, is if you could, if we could have the floor once again, please, when we're going through the draft decision. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Uh, now I, I will ask Mr. Mohammed and the e-commerce uh, to answer the questions. You have the floor. Hello. Thank you, thank you, Chair, but there was no question from our side. E-commerce? Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, likewise, we didn't hear any particular questions directed at ICOMOS that need answering. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, Mali, please, have you formulated the question uh, put it to the state party? Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le Mali remercie les membres du comité pour leur soutien. Le secrétariat de l'UNESCO les organes consultatifs et les experts pour les efforts abattus et les appuis qui ont permis de prendre en compte les nouveaux amendements que nous, ont, que nous avons soumis. Enfin, le Mali félicite chaleureusement le Bénin et l'encourage à continuer ses efforts conformément aux recommandations de cette décision 44 comme 7B.1. Les palos au royaume Dabomé constitue un joyau architectural très précieux pour l'Afrique et pour le monde. Merci. Okay, thank you. So there's no question. We'll move forward. So I see no more questions in the comments. Uh, dear colleagues, I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 44 come. 7b.1 concerning this property. But before doing so, I'd like to ask the rapporteur if she has received any amendments on this draft decision. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have received an amendment proposed by the distinguished delegation of Mali. Um, you can see the um, draft decision on the screen. We have no modifications proposed for the first five paragraphs. And uh, we, paragraph 6 reads, expresses great concern that the continuing vulnerabilities of the palace remain and requests the state party to continue its efforts against the illegal development and encroachment of the property. Okay, so dear colleagues, we pass the text uh, paragraph by paragraph. For paragraph 1 to 5, Agreed? Okay, agreed. For paragraph six, agreed? Approved? Yeah, approved. Go ahead. Paragraph 7 to 11, including paragraph 11, remain unchanged as well. Dear colleagues, approved these paragraphs? Approved. Go ahead. Paragraph 12 reads, 
Further notes that the designs for the proposed museum have been modified with lower roofs and an architectural language that respects local traditions and further requests the state party to relocate the building or make it much smaller and less dominant so that the Amazon court continues to be intelligible as a large ceremonial open space and to submit volumetric studies for review before any further detailed plans are developed for the Amazon court. Yeah, no way, please. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, our first comment or first point is regarding the second part of paragraph 12. Uh, which starts further requests to state party to relocate the building or make it much smaller and less dominant. And we would ask to include, including considering alternatives outside the property. Any objection? I see now. So approved this paragraph. Excuse me, so, uh, Mr. Chair, I have a second point, uh, if you may. OK, please. Uh, and I, I, we're not sure if this is, uh, it should be a part of paragraph 12 or, or if it should be a new, a new paragraph. But it's regarding the importance of carrying out on heritage impact assessments. Uh, and we would like to uh, propose to add the following, and I quote, uh, requests furthermore the state party to carry out a heritage impact assessment as a prerequisite for development projects and activities within and around the components of the property in conformity with paragraph 118 bis of the operational guidelines before any decisions are made. Thank you. I would be, be glad to yeah. receive your advice yeah. whether okay. this is the, the right place for that amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. I thought, I thought, yeah, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, we have a bit of a problem with the the first amendment by Norway regarding including considering alternatives outside the property. That uh, for us is problematic because the whole idea is to ensure uh, that, uh, again, the museum is there in, in, in line with, uh, with the property uh, so that uh, it can serve as a place of visit. Uh, if we locate it 200 kilometers away, uh, I, I don't see the purpose of us even sitting here. So uh, I, I, I would uh, respectfully disagree with uh, my colleague from Norway and I'd ask that the part where it says, including considering alternatives outside the property, that that part be deleted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Norway is okay for you? Uh, I guess if no one is uh, no one supporting us, we, we have to go with the consensus. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so for paragraph 12, approved. Okay, approved. Go ahead. We have a new paragraph proposed by distinguished delegation of Mali, paragraph 13, requests the state party to contribute, to continue dialogue with the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies in the framework of the timetable for the implementation of the project for the museum of the Epic of the Amazons and Kings of Dahomey to allow for a sustained exchange of documentation and to ensure the preservation of the outstanding universal value or UV of the property. Approved. Approved. 
Go ahead. New paragraph 14, original paragraph 13 remains unchanged, Mr. Chair. Approved. Approved. Go ahead. New paragraph 15. Um, there was an inconsistency between the French and the English version, and we took into account the English uh, version proposal. New paragraph 15 reads, finally requests the state party to submit to the World Heritage Center by 1 February 2022 an updated report on the state of conservation of the property and the implementation of the above for examination by the World Heritage Committee at its 45th session, full stop. Approved. Approved. Uh, dear colleagues, now we have went through all the text. If there are no other comments, I now declare the draft decision 44-7B.1 adopted as amended. Thank you very much. I would now like to ask whether any observer delegation would like to express themselves about this property. Mali, please, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président, de me donner encore la parole. Je, je tenais à m'excuser me, tout à l'heure parce que mon micro était euh, fermé à un moment donné. Je n'avais pas entendu, j'avais pensé que c'était l'adoption. Alors, je m'en excuse, j'étais tellement pressé que ça, que ça, pour l'adoption que j'ai remercié. Mais je reviens pour encore remercier euh, le Comité du patrimoine mondial et euh, les experts et, euh, et, et, et le félicite le Bénin pour tout le travail accompli et je vous remercie. Thank you, thank you for your comment. Any other observers asking for floor? I see now. Uh, dear colleagues, huh? Anyone? Benin, ah. <laughs> please, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, les chefs de délégation, je, je voudrais vous remercier, Monsieur le Président, de l'opportunité que vous me donnez, et ainsi qu'à ma délégation, pour remercier la délégation du Mali d'avoir bien voulu euh, accepter d'introduire euh, notre requête et tous les membres du comité pour euh, l'examen très favorable des propositions que nous avons faites. Nous voudrions euh, nous honorer également d'avoir eu un langage constant, ouvert et transparent avec euh, le Centre du patrimoine mondial et les organisations consultatives, notamment l'ICOMOS, sur toutes leurs préoccupations liées à la conservation du bien, Palais Royaux d'Abomey, ainsi que la mise en construction du nouveau palais, du nouveau musée, pardon, qui euh, sera le musée de l'épopée des rois et des Amazones d'Abomey. Les quatre amendements proposés par l'État parti, comme vous le savez, au point 6, 12, 13 nouveaux et 15 nouveaux, tels que présentés, visent simplement à mieux refléter les progrès accomplis dans l'amélioration de l'état de conservation du bien, avec l'appui très apprécié des partenaires comme le Royaume de Norvège, comme on l'a constaté. Il s'agit notamment des dispositions légales et réglementaires prises pour améliorer la gestion et la conservation du bien et pour enrayer le problème d'empiètement sur son territoire. La construction du futur musée constitue un projet gouvernemental important, pertinent, dont plusieurs composantes sont dédiées à la réalisation du site palatial d'Abomey et au renforcement de l'interprétation du bien dans la, triste, dans la stricte préservation de sa valeur universelle exceptionnelle. La délégation du Bénin se félicite du consensus trouvé avec le, le centre et l'ICOMOS en vue de la prise en considération de la présence, par la présence session du comité du patrimoine mondial de ces propositions d'amendement 
et réitère l'entière disponibilité à euh, poursuivre le dialogue fructueux avec euh, l'ensemble des partis. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président, et vous félicite de la qualité de votre leadership. Merci. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, dear colleagues, I suggest we close today's meeting a little bit earlier to start our next site tomorrow. Thank you for your diligent efforts and efficiency. See you tomorrow at 11.30 Paris time. And for bureau meeting, we will meet at 11, p 11, 11 a.m. Thank you. Oh, sorry, uh, Dr. Ro oh, so, sorry, Dr. Rosula, uh, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. It's just to announce that we have the budget group at 4.30 Paris time, which is um, half past 10 Fuju time. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs>